The following program is a collection of students talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pay! Stop! Stop! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 14, 2023, this sports program starts now. Football! Happened last night, and boy, is there a story coming out of western New York. Now, obviously, we can talk about the Broncos getting a massive win. Congrats to the Broncos being back. Let's yeah. go. It feels Rod. like whatever Sean Payton has been trying to cook in that kitchen with Russ being the sous chef, it is coming to fruition. They look a lot better than they looked at the beginning of the year. In certain, they're giving up 70 points. I mean, Vance Joseph's turning that defense around seemingly with all the talent that they have. And what they look like last year, maybe Russell Wilson's Broncos tenure is not going to be one that we all laugh about because the let's ride or the Mr. Unlimited or the danger witch or any of that stuff, which has really been his time in Denver. Maybe we'll remember it as one that became great with Sean Payton, and maybe he will be able to become Drew Brees 2.0 in that Sean Payton offense. We saw some old-school Russ last night. Oh, yeah. He was juking and jiving and turning and spinning, and did he hit Lockett in the corner of the end zone? Were we back in Seattle wow. watching him throw a nuke to Cortland Sutton with a incredible toe, drag, swag? Shout to Nate Burleson currently talking about the Ukraine war, yep. and also what's going on with Israel yep. in Palestine, yep. sure. when at one point he was talking toe drag swags, and we missed the hell out of him, obviously. But this catch, phenomenal. Old Russ, mm. though, showed up here in a massive way. So we could talk about the Broncos and Will Lutz making the kick when he had to. Wow. That's right. Can't have 12 people on the defensive side of the ball in that particular situation, oh, which leads us to great execution of NASCAR and May Day at the end of half and at the end of game. By the way, no timeouts, no steps. Who cares? Buffalo Bills were not prepared, had 12 people on the field. Kind of a conversation that's being lost in a win because this morning, ladies and gentlemen, the Buffalo Bills have fired offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey. Now, you would certainly ask yourself, this is less than 12 hours after the game ended. Yeah. Holy wow. hell, they've been fed up. But then you start looking around that whole team, it's like, it's not just the offense that's problematic. No. Special teams is obviously a problem. The vibes are obviously a problem. But, the culture is obviously a problem. But, what the hell is going on in Buffalo? That'll be a large portion of the conversation on this particular day after the Broncos go into Western New York and get a big-time win in a primetime game that was certainly a snoozer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> certainly a snoozer. But the AFC East sucks on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let's talk about the NFC East. The AFC East sucks on television. We had to sit through the Patriots and Colts in the morning. Patriots, Ooh. so boring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had to sit through the Jets and Raiders in primetime Sunday. So boring. No, it does. And then Monday night, we had to sit through Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. So boring. But we're moving on. We're moving ahead. We got a big conversation to be had today because there's not just one move being made in the NFL. There is a plenty. Aaron Rodgers will be joining us in the next hour. Dan Orlovsky will be joining us in about 17 minutes. He's got some ideas. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. This Buffalo Bills offense and every other offense that maybe isn't putting up 1,000 yards a game. Dan Orlovsky has the remedy and the answer because all this that I does, he spends 20 hours. 20 hours a day. Yep, yep. that's right. Watching film mm -hmm. and learning everything that is happening cool. everywhere. So we got a thousand questions to ask him in about 17 minutes. And then also uh, head coach of the Houston Texans. D'Amico Ryans will join us yeah. oh. in the third hour on YouTube and ESPN+. Plus. There's big news coming out of Houston. We will certainly ask him about that, but that's not going to be the entire topic of the conversation because what's going on in Houston is fantastic mm -hmm. with C.J. Stroud. We put out a video yesterday, talk, shout out. Hey, talk. Talk. 
on the TikTok and on the Instagram. CJ Stroud for MVP is a very well-liked thought by everybody. This dude is loved by young fans of the NFL. This dude's game in Houston has been superb, and the head coach for him is also a rookie head coach. Don't really talk about that whenever we're talking about the rookie quarterback. We got a rookie head coach as well. He'll be joining us in the third hour. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Back to back with Sea Turtle shirts. I like what you're cooking over there, Mullet Man. Yeah, I figured I'd run it back. Last week we did the two horses. This week we're doing the two Sea Turtles. You know, yeah. Yesterday was a great day. Want to hammer home the point, too. Can't use paper straws. I know sometimes that can be lost. Can't be doing that. Just stick with the plastic. Sorry to the environment. Don't kill any turtles. But, yeah, it's a good day. It's a good day to be here. I mean, especially with the Buffalo Bills. You just – I don't uh, – you said a lot there. I did. saying much. Yeah. yeah. Bingo. That was fantastic. You, it was like a Schefter answer. Yeah, trying to be. But in there, you we don't – we're not 100% behind plastic straws, though. Would like to let that be known. No. But we well, certainly would say plastic straws are way – one million times better than the paper straws. Yep. But we love a sea turtle. So if there's another alternative that isn't paper, because since the beginning of paper's existence, liquid has been its absolute arch nemesis. Yeah, uh, I mean, it is ruined. So having it as a straw, straw needs liquid, right? That's actually a part of it. Oh, yeah. It's just a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Like, we just think it's a bad idea. We need somebody to come up with something different so those beautiful sea turtles can breathe yeah. while they're down there swimming around. Yeah, exactly. It, it won't get done. Uh, we we will not find something better, but that's okay. No, smart people will figure it out. Yeah, uh, they always do. They that. do. Ken smart Dorsey? people always figure it out. Ken Dorsey going to figure it out for us? Well, listen, if he had a camera on him right now, Boy. not with what you just said, but what the Buffalo Bills did, I assume there's a lot of motion uh -huh. mm -hmm. and a lot of antics and a lot of fiery Ken Dorsey. Because we do remember down in Miami whenever they threw a ball into the dirt, whenever they could have won the game, but they instead they lost it this from last season. Ken Dorsey was caught on a little bit of a spy cam from CBS Losing his shit. Yep. Now, there was people that said, this is going to be a stain on him for the rest of his life. People were going to think, wow, this guy, a little fiery. Mm -hmm. Threw a temper tantrum. He was on there like a child, like my teenage kid yeah. does. But I think what the players saw was a guy that cared. Oh, yeah. I think everybody that has been in the NFL was like, hey, that's just an emotional guy, loves his team, wants them to succeed, especially after Dayball left and he was being questioned about everything. Now here we sit week 10 into his second year as the offense coordinator and it's not good. No. That offense is terrible. Josh Allen has gotten much worse this year. Now, mm -hmm. why? We don't know. His explosives last year and the years past since Stephon Diggs got on the team has been at the top of the league. So whenever he would throw it and turn the ball over, he would also be getting tuds and explosive and ex electricity and everything on the other side of it. So it kind of disguised itself. Now, no explosives, same turnovers. It's bad. Yeah. Also on his face, looks like he's not the same Josh yeah. Allen. Mm -hmm. He looks like Jared Goff used to look. Yeah. A bit. Jared Goff used to look this way. Kind of a deer in the headlights, kind of lost, not inspired, not excited, not confident. I think all those things kind of happen with Goff. He gets to Detroit. Now, he's a killer. Stone Cold killer. You can see it on his face whenever he's playing. Josh Allen used to look like that. Now, it's a whole different Josh Allen. Kind of lost in there. They're calling players only offensive meetings. Mm -hmm. Latavius Murray, first year there, says... Yeah, we just guys got to get some things off their chest. And then you hear Josh Allen give a motivational speech. And I don't know if it just so happened to be the motivational speech that he chose for that particular day or if it's relevant to what the team's going through. He said, whatever's going on outside of here, leave it out there. Let's just play football. So I hear those two things. I think to myself, what the f is going on in the Buffalo Bills locker room? And then you watch them play, and it's like, this team just doesn't feel like the teams of the past. We heard in the past these guys used to stay in the facility for hours and hours and hours playing cards and mm -hmm. dominoes, and Boo Ray was obviously mm -hmm. there. Gabe Davis told us that there's still a card game happening, but the vibes are not what it used to be. Feels like they're maybe not as tight. Then you got Trayvon Diggs putting out his tweets. Man. His brother, <laughs> it is a nightmare in Buffalo. I assume we bet against them forever. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys telling Diggs. I said forever, but at least until they figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah, there's there's teams that like throughout the season you put on a on a don't bet list. Um, they have been added to the, that list because uh, you don't know who they are. You don't know what you're going to get from them. Um, I believe the Hammer Don boys were on uh, the Broncos last night, so good for them. I don't know who they are, but pretty good gamblers. Uh, I, I was as well, by the way. <laughs> Plus seven and a half. Hell it was yeah, a tweet. We forgot to do it on the show. Whoops. So I apologize. And only took them because AJ took the bills and I needed one to tie it up. God have But it felt like the right bet. Well, it felt it feels like two teams going in different directions right now. Like the Broncos started off horrible. Horrendous. Horrible, horrible, 70 horrible. points. They lost, yeah, to the Dolphins. Guess what? The Bills beat that team. And now they are going in the opposite direction. They are just an absolute dumpster fire. Um, yeah, not a team that you could bet on right now. Not a team I would suggest because you just don't know what you're going to get from. Shout out to ESPN Bet, by the way, debuting sometime today. Sometime today. Sometime today. 
I don't know. We're all eagerly awaiting ESPN bet to launch. Congrats to all the parties behind the scenes that did that. Uh, they will be the uh, odds presenter for this particular program. So all of the odds and spreads that you will see on this show going forward will be from, boom, right down there. You see it? How about it? Mm -hmm. Odds by ESPN Bet. We used to go get the best line for both teams from sure. all of them. Now we're an ESPN Bet show whenever it comes to the odds. So we will be giving you their odds. Now, at the score, I believe, .com, which Penn, the company that is partnering with ESPN Bet, I think owns. You can still see the ESPN bet lines before the app launches, so we're still able to get that whole thing. But their lines have been very friendly. Uh -huh. I don't want to. I don't want to speak too loud, but we've been seeing them for like the last week or two, and it's like Smart. they're giving they're giving a little better lines than uh, than a lot of places right now. Mm -hmm. it feels like the right move, but while they're doing it, we punish them. We have no idea when it's launching today. No idea. None. Nope. Surprise. Surprise That's right. is what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. But when it does, we download it, we take advantage of it, and we appreciate it. And who would I be not to mention primetime unders now 25 and 7. Damn. Good stat. Let's remember that for Thursday night as an AFC North battle and rivalry mm -hmm. takes place. But let's get back to last night. I put a tweet out. Nine-year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB. Darius J. Butler looks yes, incredibly sir. fly. Good boy, but Super fly today. Yeah. Super sure. duper fly today. Mate. I put a tweet out last night and said, I'm confused by Josh Allen. I'm so confused by it because he's supposed to be the guy. He, he's supposed to have all the intangibles, the size, the speed, Bud. the competitive juices, uh, the energy, uh, the intelligence. He's supposed to be the prototype of what people are looking for. This guy's six foot five, whatever, can run, can take a hit. Yeah. The boys love him. His hand's gigantic. Yeah, and, and he can throw it forever. And then we've seen over the years him make some dumb decisions at times, whether it's with his body taking a hit that he didn't need or a throw that he certainly didn't have to throw. But on the flip side, he was great. So we were able to kind of enjoy it and say, yeah, that's what I want on my team. Nobody wants this guy on their team now. What the hell has happened, Darius, and why do you think we're seeing this? Is it Ken Dorsey? Do we think that is what it was? And what is this potentially going to do for Josh Allen and Bills the rest uh, of the year? It's, it's definitely not all on Ken. Uh, I wouldn't say it's all on Josh either. Definitely a combination of the two. Um, he had his best ball, obviously, when Stephon Diggs got there and Brian Dayball was calling plays and designing the whole, um, you know, designing the whole thing. So that that's... That's a part of this as well. We talked about it yesterday with quarterbacks having different voices and different philosophies, different play calls and all these different things. But, um, you know, Josh, it's, it's been his Achilles heel from the jump. You mentioned all the explosive plays and him being special, but just turning the ball over too much. You know, the fumble. I don't know if that ball was slick last night, but the fumble, Cook had a few of them. He had one on the handoff. The turnovers, the first one went off Gabe Davis' hand, but the other one was just, I mean, unacceptable. And now uh, you got to take care of the ball. I don't care how special you are as a talent. You have to take care of the football. And a lot of times you watch the tape he just doesn't it doesn't seem like he has a bunch of answers pre-snap like he doesn't know where he's going with the ball what the coverage is going to be it's not designed like a Ben Johnson offense or um a Kyle Shanahan Mike McDaniel like a lot of those are designed throwing windows to attack coverages easy. Offenses, I don't yeah. say easy but easier easier yeah that, and that's what you should have for your quarterback like the majority of their passes should be designed in easier throws Mental wise, at least uh, for him, it's like he almost has to be special, like a backyard type, you know, run to his left, run to his right, make a great throw to dig. So um, too much of that offensive line could be better as well. Running game, I think, is the only bright spot consistently when they actually hand the ball off and the running backs take care of it. Hey, Latavius did okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Take you know, I, I've been wondering why Latavius Murray's been uh, taking reps away from James Cook and then first play and then another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ball was on the ground. That first play fumble where they ripped it out of his hands, I mean, that was – I think AJ said it when we were watching Oklahoma, Texas. He said, like, hey, all game here, Oklahoma's been the alphas. Mm -hmm. Like, after the play, little shots. Like, mm -hmm. like who's who's staying on top of who a little bit longer? Yep. Who's being a little bit more physical? First play of the game last night, they ripped the ball out of the damn guy's hands. It was like, yo, Broncos, yeah. here we go. Like, yeah. I felt good about Broncos plus seven and a half. Like, hey, they showed up ready for this one. Now, obviously, they've been mocked and ridiculed all season long, this Denver Broncos defense. For giving up, we said it, I've already said it three times because it's such an enough. They give up 70 to yeah. a team, mm -hmm. okay? And that is not something that happens in professional football. You can have a bad day and give up 50, and everybody's like, like, oh, 50 burger. Yikes. Oh, 70. That's a whopper, dude. Yeah. That's not just a burger. That's quarter pounder. That is a half yeah. pounder. That's a lot of meat. That's a big ass beating. And it's like that team has had to live with that. Yeah. You know, so I'm prime time. First play of the game, they rip it out. I'm like, damn, okay, Broncos defense is back, maybe. And then didn't see James Cook for, no. and then he showed him on the sideline, like pacing back and forth. And I'm like, what's going through James Cook's mind? Man. You know, what, what's happening there? But on the Bills, in the Bills defense, 
And maybe it's Ken Dorsey. We have no idea if it's McDermott or Ken Dorsey. You'd assume that'd be a head coach's decision. Mm -hmm. But on their side, it's like, he also did fumble. And Latavius Murray came in and Mm -hmm. started doing very well. I've seen football coaches make that decision before. Then another mishandle with... Uh, James Cook later, it's like, oh, maybe that's why I guess they haven't been playing him. But anytime he gets the ball, it seems like he does good stuff with it. Oh, yeah. Except for whenever he's fumbling, I guess. So I feel like they still have the pieces. Don Kincaid, big drop. Gabe Davis, yep. big drop. Josh Allen really has it. Stephon Diggs, still a good player if yeah. he wants to be there. I mean. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. That's tough. Those texts, those mm-hmm. tweets from Trayvon Diggs. Not great. Yeah. How about him saying, like, uh, him saying, yeah, like, uh, yeah, buddy sucks since my brother got there. Yeah, don't brother forget. Got let's, uh, man, 14, got to get up out of there, he mm-hmm. said first. And then his next one was, well, let's not forget, just as this conversation's happening, he didn't start going off till bro got there. I assume he muted both of these tweets. <laughs> I assume he muted both of them and was like, let me just drop this out there. Yeah. And I'll just let them sort it out. Yeah. And I won't even have to see it. But that's obviously a conversation that's going to be had today in yeah. the locker room. They got a lot of hard shit to deal with it oh, seems. Yeah. How do they get right? Do they get right? Ooh. Or is this just what the Bills are? Because that AFC is stacked. I mean, I, so they can get right. You mentioned they still have the talent. Um, you know, now you got a new Here. OC. Joe Brady, mm-hmm. I think, will be um, calling the plays now. He'll step in there as an OC. He was a former LSU. obviously LSU guy, and he got a, a shot in Carolina nice. and got let go from there. So he'll have an opportunity there. Middle of the season, you don't love that, obviously, especially when you come into the season expecting to be contenders. But if you look at the AFC, I mean, it's a lot of four and oh, five yeah. and five and five teams. So if you go on a, a three-game run here, which they can, um, you know, you'll be in, in a great spot. We know how, how quick shit can change in the NFL, but, I mean, it, I don't Col- know what's going on. As you said it yesterday, something's going on in there. Something's Dude, something's going on. Going on. I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Something's yeah. going on. It seems like it. We're we obviously not in there, but you can look at the football know these players. It's not like a bunch of new guys just thrown together. These guys have been around each other. We've had a lot of guys from that team on the show. Um, it, it's weird vibes coming out of it Buffalo. It feels right like something happened in a locker yeah. room. Just as somebody who has been in a couple locker rooms where something has happened and it's like, all right, it's a different place now all of a sudden mm-hmm. because somebody either has beef with somebody over something. Who knows? Mm-hmm. There's betrayal in there, potentially. Sure. Yeah. Who knows? Certainly something. I mean, there's there's little yeah. there's something happened in there. It feels like, and I think it's very obvious on the football field. But to your point about if you look at the AFC standings right now and the wild card, what that conversation is going to be, it's like we talked before the season about how this is going to be the best Pac-12 that the Pac-12 has ever had. Okay, but the Pac-12 has to play each other all at the end of the season, so they're going to cannibalize each other. Mm-hmm. They're going to give each other a couple losses, mm-hmm. probably. Now Oregon might be able to keep going. We have no idea. Washington, if they remain undefeated through this stretch. They have earned their way into the college football playoff. It's like the AFC is the same damn thing. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. AFC is not yeah. easy right now. Tough. Everybody's got to face their own. Now, the AFC East is garbage Yeah, terrible. at this exact moment. Sure. Trash bag. But they could get better, all of them, because they all have the ability. Obviously, it's the NFL. But the AFC is going to beat the hell out of each other getting in there. So if the Beals can rattle off four or five wins, how you doing? Keep moving. That's why you also give, like, Credence to the thought that maybe the Texans. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, the Texans could even go if they keep going. Here's the Jets remaining, or here's the Bills remaining schedule. Got the Jets. That's going to be a tough one. For sure. That defense knows them. That's mm-hmm. going to be tough. Mm-hmm. Eagles, well, okay, that's easy, right? <laughs> Chiefs, simple. Absolutely easy. Not good. Cowboys, no problem. No problem at all. Chargers, fresh travel win. That'll be nice. People forget. Fresh, what's that? No, they, they got beat by the. Oh, yeah. yeah. Heart, heart, heartbreak Heartbreaker. <laughs> they had a win. Yeah. Yeah. Then they didn't, then they lose it to the Lions. But, uh, Patriots, terrible. Well, Patriots are 1 0 against the Bills this year, but yep. But. And then Dolphins, the only team in the AFC East that seemingly have a chance to win a Super Bowl with all pieces kind of humming right now. Great bye week. That's a tough, that is a tough run. That is a very difficult run. But you're right. Maybe they get some things back in order. I just think behind the scenes, they got to figure it out more so than anything. And with a new OC, maybe that'll help. Well, we'll see. I mean, it certainly feels like Ken Dorsey was kind of the sacrificial lamb here. It's just like, hey, the, the sky's falling. Everything's going to shit. Let's fire this guy and kind of just get a little heat off, you know, maybe McDermott's plate. But we talk about it. Like, every time someone from the Bills comes on the show, like, it's a big, like, it's all about the vibes. You know, like, those guys, that like, going into the season, they're so tight-knit, like, they all love being around each other. And when you watch them play, they're just like so lackadaisical, like devoid of energy. It seems like they don't give a shit out there. Like they turn it over and it's just kind of like that's the expectation. Like, oh, okay, well, here we go again. Like it's going to be just like it was last week. And if you are trying to like find yourself right now to push to get into the playoffs, like 
Are you going to do it on the road in Kansas City and on the road in Philadelphia? And then even the Chargers, who can score, you know, 40 points a game. Like, it just, I don't know. you gotta, you got to win the games you're supposed to win, and they haven't been. And now it's like they're getting into the meat of their schedule when everything is falling apart. And I, I, go ahead. No, no it, it, to your point, like the turnovers, those kind of draw, those suck the energy out. If a guy goes up and just makes, certain goes up and make an unbelievable interception, like, all right, you draw off the field, you line up play. The, that that out route he threw was so like the cornerback had to stop and go back to pick it off. Uh, the fumble ball just that falls one. out of his hand. Come that's on. that's terrible. And then to end the game, I know Ken Dorsey got the axe today, but Sean McDermott's calling the defense. That's the head coach. And you're the defensive coordinator, and you're in situations with field goal rush or whoever is. So you have four different field goal rush teams, right? You have your base one, and then you have a nickel field goal rush team. You have a dime field. So whatever defensive personnel package you have, you have that field goal rush team for a situation like that when it's NASCAR and you're rushing it. Hey, everybody got to know where to line up. So when you have something like that happen with 12 people on the field, you essentially win the game and then oh. you go back and you're like, oh, shit. Week 10. Re- you, you can't, you cannot Pre-season have that. Preseason games, you see that. You can't, yeah. Preseason games, you yeah. see it. Like guys rushing on the field, rushing off the field. It's normally a cluster oh, and man. special teams in the preseason. Yeah. Like if you see teams that figure out, it's like, oh, they must have older guys at depth positions because normally it's rookies who don't know any better. Mm-hmm. So they have no idea. They're playing special teams for the first time in their life. They forget they're on a team. They're on a team. They're not on a team. There could be 14 guys on the field, yep. you know, in preseason games. Week 10, this is happening. Must win. That's a, that is insane to think about that it's taking place up there. Feels like a much different outfit in Buffalo than we had seen over the last couple of years. Hopefully, they're able to figure it out. Maybe they'll hire this guy. I know they gave Joe Brady mm-hmm. uh, the nod, and Joe Brady is one of the most perfectly faded white dudes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's uh, Since his time at LSU, yep, he has yep. had a very good fade. Top Still team. does. You see him on TV. He's talking. He has his head turned sideways. You think that guy's always has a fresh fade. Oh, yeah. So I'm happy about that. Uh, Tim Tebow, Justin Timberlake, sure. there's some other yep. stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Marty Smith. Marty Smith always has a great, great fade. fade. I would say this dude, since day one, Joe Brady mm-hmm. has been one. Will Smith. So there's some stuff coming out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Ed, the Smith just reminded me of it, but he always has a great fade too. Boy, what I heard about well, he's talking murder, killing him. Yeah, yeah. just getting killed. So I don't they I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know how this all plays out. But we need to hear from Will. You know what I mean? Yes, we do. We're hearing from a lot of people. All the like, we've been hearing from a lot of people for a yeah. long time, and Will has just been gone. I well, thought he was so good at social media. He, always he had, had to take a break. He made a everything. mistake. He had to take a break. Hey, Fresh Prince, we, I think you should. I think you should say something somewhere. Some maybe yeah. not a yeah. red table. Maybe a different. Yeah, exactly. any table, no one. table. Get murdered so out here more. Joining more us ways now, than one. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen. What y'all talking about? I think you do. You do. No, no clue. What was yeah, that? You do. I think you if do, you have the internet, you say? which yeah. every human on earth now, thanks to Starlink, has. You mm-hmm. heard? Okay, we all did. Mm-hmm. We don't love it. We just like no truth. Yeah. And if that's the case, happy for him. Happy he's happy. Absolutely. Joining us now is a guy who definitely doesn't know what we're talking about because he actually lives under a rock. Mm-hmm. But the rock that he lives under has football film running 24-7. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who's been called cheap before by other people, but not by us. No. The incredibly handsome spokesperson for a shoulder thingy, ESPN quarterback pundit, Dan Rolowski. Dan, Dan How's your shoulder doing? <laughs> What were you guys just talking about? Dude, about Google it. Yeah. Actually, don't put don't, that in your algo. Yeah, don't no, do don't it. put well, it in the algo. It's too clean. Might want to see your that. algo's too clean with everything you search for. Like, can I get a uh, white chicken breast? Uh, <laughs> give me some plain rice. No salt. Don't let salt get into the algorithm. Let me just live my life. How was Germany, dude? How was it? Was it awesome? Germany was actually cool, man. I, I liked it. Uh, it was a lot better for me experience-wise than London. I don't love going to London. Um, London just... Same. I've never enjoyed the food. Um, I think it's too short of a flight to like sleep overnight in the red eye. But it was cool. Rich Eisen was amazing. Rich is like one of the best people in this business I've ever come across. McCordy was great. I think McCordy's a star. Um, obviously, the game was a standalone, like massive game. So doing that was really fun. Nice. Food was great. My wife came with me. So it, w- it was cool. Well, we thought you did, Rich. Yeah. Let's go, Dan. Good job, Dan. Thanks, man. And we, Thanks, echo, we echo the sentiment of everything you said about all the people there. Rich Eisen, though, gets 
harshly judge. I think he does great. Yeah, I yeah. don't know why. People. I enjoy waking up with him. Yeah, like I enjoy Rich Eisen. We don't get to hear it because the show's on at the exact same time as ours. Mm -hmm. So I'll see his yeah. clips afterwards. He used to watch the show like every single day. I'm a big Rich fan. I think he crushes yeah. calling games. I think he does Absolutely. well calling games. Different vibe. Yeah, I, enjoy I went to him at halftime, and I was just like, dude, you're awesome. You know, like you, you, try, you know how hard that is to step into a booth you've never been in, three man booth, and big game, obviously foreign. City, so you don't have maybe everything that you're accustomed to when calling a game. And he was he was awesome, dude. And my wife loved him because he was like just a tremendous storyteller and and uh, just like a sweet human being. So I, I thought he was great. He does need to realize when country roads take, take, me, take home me home to, to the place. Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, Rich needs to just let it eat. Yep. Just let that. That's a banger all the time. 9.30 a.m., yeah. 7.30 p.m., midnight at every bar in Morgantown. That song bangs all the time. The fact that they love it over there so much taught me everything I need to know about Germany. They have a good yeah. time. Yeah. Every, it was cool. They love football, huh? Cool. They love the football. Yeah. Love it. Uh, Frankfurt, like, the, as a city, people loved it. And then they, obviously, Munich last year, they said they loved as well. And I think there's conversation of maybe going to Spain or Rio or something. Oh, in the we going to Barcelona? So, Ooh. We yeah, going to Barcelona? Ibiza? Um, yeah, I don't know exactly where in Spain, but uh, I, I know those two are. But Germany loved it, man. Loved it. Yeah, me too. Hopefully they go to Barcelona. That'd be great. I hope so. And we'll be able to talk about Methy over there with the people. Mm -hmm. so cool. That'll be a blast. All right, let's talk about Ken Dorothy. He got fired this morning. Do you think he's the reason why the Bills stink? <laughs> the Bills stink on offense right now for a multitude of reasons. So, like, All right. <clears throat> I, I, I did now this when I was younger in this industry. I came at people when it came to coaching. I was like, you got to fire them. I'm never – I kind of made myself the promise I'm never going to kind of do that again. I actually had a conversation – face-to-face, man-to-man recently with a coach. I did that, too, when I was younger and even reaffirmed it. So, like, the results are what the results are. It's a results-based business and business. And the, the what, when you look at that offensive play, the things that are the problems. Okay, n number one, it's wildly predictable. I know that people in Pittsburgh talk about their offense. It's wildly predictable. Like, if I went to D-butt right now, we were talking about it last night. If I went to D-butt right now and said, hey, the Bills are in two-by-two two on first and second down, two guys on the right, two guys on the left, they are running either an RPO or they're running a short end to Stephon Diggs. That's problem number one. Then when they get into bunch, they're running the spot routes. That's It's wildly <laughs> predictable. Um, number two, it is, it is the easiest offense in the NFL right now to, like, prepare for because they don't do anything. It's so dependent, and it reminds me of the Bucks Super Bowl year. They're so dependent on, hey, if everybody executes to a 10 on this play, we'll be good. <laughs> now, the downside is that's so unrealistic. Sometimes it happens. Like, sometimes it works out great, and they all execute it. Josh is off the charts and stuff, and it looks great. No, it's just but so on Madden, bank on that. On Madden, <laughs> I was told. Everybody that's a 98 is a 98 all the time, every single day. Yeah, that's, right. that's what I was yeah. told on Madden. Dan, what are you talking about? Yeah, they only run like two run plays. They pull the tackle and run tackle trap or tackle count or whatever you want to call it. They build no of their pass game, none of their pass game into Stephon Diggs. I watched the, the Rams do it with Cooper. I watched the Bengals do it with Jamar Chase. I watched the Vikings do it with Justin Jefferson. Like, hey, we are calling these plays to get these guys the ball in multiple different ways. They don't do it. So it's like it's a it's very much so schematically a broken offense. Their fourth and one call I hated last night, motioning just to say we moved the guy. So it, it everyone's gotta be better. Turnovers all that, no doubt, but like it's broken schematically. I've said this forever. Go under center and run more play action with motion. They do it, they're good. They just don't do it more than three or four times a game. So there's a lot of reasons the results are what the results are. Yeah, and you mentioned about Stephon Diggs getting the ball, and I immediately, I almost interrupt you because that's what I do, but like it's uh, it's not great, but I do it. But the, the Devontae Adams situation with the Raiders, literally just the other day, it was like yeah. Antonio Pierce came out and was like, yeah, we're going to try to get the ball to Devontae Adams. Like, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. It's like, why wouldn't you do that to Stephon Diggs? Especially with you know who Stephon Diggs is. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Stephon Diggs is a guy that if he gets the ball and is in the game, he's going to be 
the best guy on the field. Mm -hmm. If not, there's a chance he's going to be like, why the hell are you paying me what you're paying me? And why am I even here if you're not going to do it? And those are valid questions. Mm -hmm. Now, the way he goes about it, I think it's standard wide receiver stuff, but some people see it a different way. It's like, I yeah. would die to have Stephon Diggs on the Colts. And if Shane Steichen had Stephon Diggs on the Colts, those first three plays are bubble bubble, maybe a slant. Let's get the ball into this guy's hands so he knows that he's a part of it. It's like, why didn't Dorsey do that? Why didn't McDermott tell him we need to do that? You know, like that's a, uh, that's a whole nother question about how they, we even got to this point. It's, it's, I have no idea. I, I can't, like, I remember talking about this weeks ago when it came to CD Lamb and the Cowboys. It was like, if you're not going to get him the ball and throw it to him, then just trade him. And I feel that way in relation to Stefan Diggs and Buffalo right now. And people throw out these numbers like targets and all that. Guys, watch the games. I, I, you can watch the game and know that they are not calling plays with the specific point of getting that person the football. And I do want to give some love to Sertan last night. Like He was really good. But that's why it goes into another level for me, Pat. It's not only that they're, they're not trying to get him the ball. It's when they throw him the ball, he's literally running a five-yard in route. The old school, like Reggie Wayne stuff. We, we, we can't. We can't get him in a more diversified role or a more diversified route tree. So, again, there are so many things schematically broken about their offense that the results kind of lend itself to sitting sit there going, I understand why. I look at that team and I see, like, um, much different mana. Yeah. yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Uh, mana. Opposite. Yeah, it's not a lot of mana. No, no. Not a lot, not a no lot of jam. mana. You know, last year they had a lot of mana, mm -hmm. felt like. Yeah. Now they went through a lot. So obviously that's going to bring a team together. But they were like known for being a team that was fun to watch. They're having fun. We're yeah. a blast. And it's hard to do that whenever you're losing or whatever. But are you happy because you win or do you win because you're happy? You know, like I think that that team appears to have some shit going on behind the scenes too. You know, it's like, does Ken Dorsey getting out of there? Yeah. Does it fix that type of stuff as well? Like, do you think this has a real effect on them bouncing back and making the most of this season, especially in an AFC where it's very gettable because how middle heavy it is? Like, do you think this change helps them and do they go on a run? If they play way freer, you know, like, and, and that's always a fine line. They have to walk and certainly Josh, like Josh is one of those players. Like I see, I see stuff on the internet right now where it says, well, Josh Allen's mechanics have fallen off. I disagree with that respectfully. I don't see that. I think all the things okay. that are necessary. All right, put it on the table. Respectfully. Yeah. I think all the things that are necessary to throw it well, Josh is doing that. Um, but I do, I, I don't think that watching this tape, is a surprise to Sean McDermott in Buffalo. I think that it was very obvious what they were schematically. So why had Ken Dorsey kept his job for that long? My guess, players liked him. My guess that a guy like Josh Allen liked him. That's an assumption by me. So now it goes to Joe Brady, and it's like, well, can Joe Brady free them up a little bit more? Can Joe Brady, Joe Brady maybe get them into a little bit more empty, something that I think that they should have been utilizing more, as long as Josh plays with his hots? Um, will Joe Brady put them under center a little more? So if he gets them to that place where, I'm not saying you're reinventing the wheel schematically, but y you've got to lean into things that you're good at and get away from the stuff that you stink at, um, it could help their offense, obviously. See, injuries are a part of it. Turnovers are a part of it. But um, I think they're far too talented to play the way that they did over the last three or four weeks. Were you interviewed by McDermott last night about potentially becoming the offense coordinator? Or? Ooh. I saw that tweet from some, some from someone. No, uh, I, I wasn't, man. I, I didn't. I was just talking about the way you were talking there. It sounds like you were going to be an yeah. offense coordinator at mm -hmm. some point. That's going to happen, right? We all assume. I, I would, I would hope so. I, I mean, it's certainly something that's oh, on yeah. my mind at Come some home, point man. one day. But my kids are too young. Oh, so uh, we got to wait till the kids get a little bit older, so you can be living on a couch for six months. Yeah, and you guys, you guys know what that job is like. So, but I love what I do now. So, what do you OC from the sideline or up in the booth? Yeah, what do you think about that? That's Ooh. a good question. Because Matt I'd America. It depends on who the quarterback coach is. Like, if the quarterback coach is someone that you trust can have those face to face conversations with the guy on the sideline, then you're good to go up. But if you don't have that guy, you got to stay down. Oh, I didn't know that was the reasoning because that makes a lot of sense now. You don't think Matt yeah. America? You got to have the person. Uh, you got to have the person who knows what they're talking about, who's been in the fire, I, I feel. You got to have a person who knows what it's like looking at the picture. So. All right, what did Joe Brady do? I wonder. We will find out. Butler has a question for you. Dor Dorsey Deep was in the booth too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah they didn't yeah. give a yeah. chance to go to the certainly. Sideline. He was yeah. certainly in the, the sideline. And I like Ken. I like Ken. Grew up in Miami, family yeah. in Carolina. I like him. But um, 
So what? Obviously, we're talking about Ken Dorsey and Buffalo. Why is it so hard, and why is it such a a, a huge difference with offenses like uh, Detroit with Ben Johnson, obviously Miami, Mike yeah. McDaniel, Kyle Shanahan, even what uh what they're doing in Houston? Like I feel like a lot of those quarterbacks. You talk about Josh Allen. Obviously, we know he can be special, but I feel like. A lot of times he doesn't have answers pre-snap. Obviously, emptying those things, I feel like it, it gives you answers. But why is it such a difference between those type of offenses and then an offense like we've seen in Buffalo for a couple of years now? Philly. Yeah, number one, the offenses that you name all come from the Shanahan tree. Ben Johnson, um, and Mike McDaniel, uh, uh, Slowick in Houston, they're all from that tree. Okay, so um, – like that tree and that offense is fundamentally built on how the different ways that we can one attack a defense and then two create advantages for our guys, whether it's a leverage advantage, whether it's an angles advantage, whether it's a numbers advantage. When I watch Buffalo's offense, there is no advantage that gets taken. And that's kind of my point. D but yep. is that they're so dependent on the execution. And I've often have felt that that's a crux. It's, well, we have to execute better. We, everyone who's been around football knows execution matters. Our job, I would say my job as a coach, I would say, is make your execution easier. So those offenses, Ben Johnson makes uh, an, an Amon Ross St. Brown's job, his execution-wise, it's easier. Jared Goff's execution is easier. Um, a guy like Nico Collins in Houston, the execution of stuff is easier. And then those guys execute that at a high yeah. level and that's it now you're seeing that elevate elevation and i think in buffalo it's well josh is so good and steph is so good and uh, kincaid or dawson knox is so good yeah. that those guys can just over, ex oh, execute people yeah. over the course of four game, four quarters josh is not that as a player though like that's if it Styles matter for quarterbacks. Joe Burrow is an ex he's an executor. CJ Stroud is an execution guy. Whoa. Jared Goff is an execution guy. Josh is a creator. He's a he's a like a freelance guy. So he has to be in an offense that promotes that. And they don't have that in Buffalo. And there's there's too much of hey, the defense knows our play, and it's not a great play, but you're so good that mm -hmm. go make something happen. Yeah, need, need killers. That's right. Yep. That's what it just sounded mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. Execution. Execution. Have that. People Fire. that are executing. Cutting people. heads mm -hmm. off. Yeah, execution. Yeah. Straight Serial killer. killer. Boom, bang, pow. Need it to happen. Mm -hmm. need, you to, need you to execute everything. Everybody. Right. Yep. That's what we need in our quarterback. Josh Allen does like, look. look at the Look at the example, Pat. I don't want to cut you off, but like the fourth and two for the Please. Lions the other day. It's... It's not all that different than the play that the Bills ran on fourth and one. Now, fourth and two, fourth and one do matter. But Three, Jared is obsessed with execution. This is the most detail-centric offense in football, the Detroit Lions. It's the most detailed, obsessed offense in the whole NFL. Everybody, not just the quarterback, everyone. The, the shallow cross gets to the ghost tight end, which is where the opposite twice. tight end would be. Laporta never looks back. He never looks yeah, back to Jared Goff until he gets there. Jared throws it on the right shoulder. It's zone. He sits. That's, that's not who Buffalo identity is on offense. Damn, damn. That's who... Detroit is, yeah. But with Josh Allen, you're saying him being the creator, him being special, wouldn't that be – I feel like that's a part of the issue that he does it too much. When, don't you want to kind of rein that in and make him, make him more of that execution? Because all those guys you mentioned, you know, they execute the offense to a T, and then, you know, the four or five plays when they got to be special, make a wild throw, they yeah. do it. And I feel like it's almost flipped with Josh. It's like, hey, 25 plays, you go and be special, and then these five plays, hey, execute and lock in. It's harder to do that. So don't you kind of think it's – they should flip it if you're, if you're uh, you know, calling plays for them or designing it for them? Great question, but I don't think that's on fourth and one, D-Butt. I think that's on, on a first down call. Uh, if, like, on fourth and one, you would very rarely, if ever, go with a designed quarterback run or a zone read with a Jared Goff because that's not who he is. Correct. Absolutely can do that with Josh Allen, but I don't think on fourth and one we sit there and go, well, this quarter, th that's just not who he is personality-wise and not who he is play style-wise. I've always wondered this about awesome. Buffalo. It is awesome. <laughs> when Josh he does gets, one of those, they're like, look, on time, yeah. Yeah. that offense looks good. Like, every time it happens, it's like, whoa. Yeah. It's nice. like a celebration almost that it takes place. Go yeah. Ahead. Sorry about it. Yeah. And and no, but I've always wondered, because Josh gets himself off the off the track at times. You know, like, just because, again, that's his play style. I've always wondered. Like why do and they might, but it doesn't feel that way. Like they don't have a section on their play 
sheets where it's like get get our get Josh back under control, please. Like, what are the five or six plays that they can go to that just get him back in alignment and under control? And right now. Because then you do want to promote that freedom in, in playmaking. Yeah, I think Joe Brady hopefully will be able to address it. If not him, then who this next offseason? What do the Bills like look like going forward? We show, we're big fans of the Bills. Yeah. The Bills are great for the NFL yeah. the last couple of years. I hope they continue to turn. <laughs> now, let's move on to different subjects because the boys are so pumped to talk to the Dan Orlovsky. Ty Schmidt has one for you. Yeah, Dano, 10 weeks in, um, what is your opinion on Jordan Love in terms of whether or not he is the guy moving forward? Forward. Early on in the season, he looked, you know, pretty damn good. But then it seems like he's kind of just got worse every week. He's not protecting the ball at all. I don't know if that's more a product of play calling or that's him. But then it's harder, too, when yeah. you look in the same division and a guy like Josh Dobbs, who has been a career journeyman, just gets in there and kind of picks things up right away, is playing well and, and has been winning. So I don't know. Is it more on Jordan Love or is it more on kind of LaFleur not putting him in positions to be successful? Because with KOC and Dobbs, it looks like, you know, I mean, the sky is falling when Kirk gets hurt, but then all of a sudden he comes in and we're talking about them going to the playoffs still. Yeah, I think what Dobbs and Kevin O'Connell done in Minnesota is unbelievable. O'Connell, I think Josh's ability to time his feet in that offense is big. So Jordan Love, um, Ty, like – <clears throat> there are moments when he makes great throws. The the ball down to Musgrave, middle of the field, obviously the late one on the deep crosser. There's moments when he makes great throws. Um, there's not enough good throws. And the good throws are sometimes like the layups that are just part of that offense, the layups that you know Matt LaFleur calls into the, the game plan or into the game, and they're there. And sometimes they lean – they become completions – but instead of it being a four, like a, excuse me, like a twelve or fifteen yard gain, it's like a five or six yard gain because the the ball placement forces the guy to adjust his body to make a catch, or it's a more difficult catch. And you sit there and go, it's a completion, but it's not a good throw. And so there are moments of great throws. And hear me out when I say this: I think one, the pass pro struggles have thrown the timing off of their pass game, and so now it feels like they're with Jordan. It's get the ball out now, or like move around in the pocket and try to create something. And, and that's a bad place to be for a guy who's playing for the first time. It reminds me a little bit like I'm not making this lateral comparison. It reminds me a little bit like um, Lamar's first year starting as a passer where some of like the really easy throws he didn't make um, in the way that you want them to. Like, hey, man, it's, it's, a, it's a spot route, and if you just throw the ball on the chest of the guy and the inside shoulder, he's going to get eight yards. But you throw it low and away, and he gets three. And I think that's where Jordan's got to grow a lot in the next six weeks is make those, weeks. Like, those, those completions that are there. Like, make, that? Still make really good throws. I did not expect you to say six weeks there. I, I thought you were going to say like the next year, or off season, everything like that, because you heard the same thing we heard about Goody saying maybe he's not the guy yeah. for the future, yeah. but really it's his first year playing. So is I mean, we're going to have a full conversation about Jordan Love getting dropped into a nightmare situation yep. behind the scenes, yeah. being forced to go in behind a guy who's a four time NFL MVP, Mount Rushmore quarterback of all time, with him getting forced out for you, and then if you have one year, do we even know what Lafleur? I mean. That's going to be tough. Yeah. And then Josh Dobbs just goes and goes bananas. I love that you guys are watching that in the same division. He's just special, huh? Josh Dobbs is a super special guy. Um, obviously, his brain is, is a big part of the conversation. I, I think the most impressive thing with all this is, and D, but to your point, like, O'Connell comes from the Shanahan tree, right? And the like this crosser is a perfect example of it. He has to throw that crosser on one hitch, meaning top of his drop, gather his feet. In this offense, like it's huge to say, hey, you have to play on time and your feet, your feet tell you where and when to throw the football. That's just part of this offense. It's ingrained in the foundation. It's really hard to get control of that. He's absolutely done that. And then his athleticism and his ability, like – there's five or six clips, man, where you sit there and go, I've watched guys struggle with this for two or three years in this offense, like one to two, mm. and he's just done an awesome Shit! job, like, like getting that under control. He's awesome, dude. They call him the Pastronaut, too? Mm -hmm. What a name. Yeah, yeah, beast. That's a great nickname. Yeah. yeah. He's a super smart dude, and 
passing an astronaut, I guess. Pastronaut. Pastronaut. I love it. Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. You put it. Yeah. Hey, nice. you see? You see Good what work. they're saying? Yeah, NASA yeah, actually yeah, put yeah, that together. Work, so Dan. astronauts put that one together, yeah. actually. So so who do you think thought right of that here. nickname? NASA. It was NASA. NASA's still around? Dan. Dan. What I understand I thought that we were going on other people's spaceships to space, <laughs> mm -hmm. but we still got astronauts, Dan. Okay. I thought NASA was like defunded or something. Dan, or Dan, Dan. Dan, listen, potentially money was allocated other places, you know, but yeah. they're is. still they're still down there floating around in zero gravity. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Sounds they're like still going to another country to go up into the space station so yeah. they can yep. do experiments about what the next frontier is and everything like that. Mm -hmm. We still got America. Purdue, right here in Indiana. Huh? You know what they create? Astronauts. Boom. So maybe what, with, watch oh, what you're yeah. saying. Watch what you're saying. I would tread lightly if I were you, my friend. Yeah, dangerous line here. Okay. Do you think we're ever going to have like an interstellar with McConaughey? Like yeah. Brother. Already happened. I can't wait to meet one of these things. I, I don't know. I don't know when. I don't know how. But I hope I'm one of the people that somehow weasels my way in to be, how's it going there, thing? You know, <laughs> I cannot wait. I cannot you know, wait. Josh Dobbs doesn't believe in aliens? Uh -oh. Even though he's an astronaut? He's told to say that. Yeah. That's one of the rules. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Uh, that's the one of the rules. He's a part of it. That's how we on, know Dan. he's already all the Don't way in. Don't be an idiot. That's mm -hmm. part of, yeah, you're so dumb, Dan. I mean, <laughs> Dan, you believe in aliens, right? Of course. I do not. Dan. 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 Oh. Dan. Now's not the time, but you need to reconsider. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, yeah. Just do one we of these. No one night. One night. Do this. Not today because we can see behind you about how cloudy it is. Just do this okay. one and go, holy shit. It's so big up there. Just do that one time. Just right. try to get right. a grasp of just how big it is. You All those lights are suns, Dan. I mean, from the back, they just said, we don't know if Dobbs is an alien or not. Well, that's a good point. He shouldn't be doing what he's doing at all. But I'm pumped about it. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Josh Dobbs, uh, if you are one of our aliens, like Elon Musk, who is certainly one, mm -hmm. he just builds them and goes up there. He built that, and we just expect accept it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an alien. No, that's Elon. Oh. Oh. oh okay. I'm not buying uh, smart. Yeah. I'm not buying it. Now, I do think that the variance of intelligence on the planet makes no sense to me, like how some people have created like the internet or yeah. like planes, but um, we have some people are super dumb. So I agree with that, but I don't think aliens are real. Okay. All right. Big I, old yeah. universe. What's Jeez, that? This big old universe. You think yeah. it's just us out here? The yeah, pretty arrogant life. of you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> the analytics. Very much so. Oh, my God. So arrogant, Dan. Damn. Just We're the only ones. We're the only Generally. we. You just talked about those super dumb ones. We, we being some. You think we're the only things here? That's a wild thing to think. I think by the time we die, we know. I think 100%. we find out. Yeah, hopefully, it's no getting time. hot in the streets out there. It's getting. Do hot. you know when you're gonna die? So, I used to say the good die young, and I'm fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, you nope, didn't. Nope, you didn't. Nope. I didn't. You didn't. I, no, I'm not saying anything. You love fun. I'm yeah. fun. Yeah. Good day, you know, I'm TV. fun. I'm fun. <laughs> I'm fun, you know? So I'm trying to be a good human, so I always assumed I was good. With the way I was living, I, I, I didn't think I was making it to 30, to be honest with you. But now I'm 36. I mean, I'm going to live forever you look now. Great. Now I'm trying yeah. to get frozen. Now, you know, whenever you I'm go. on my deathbed. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. So I can... Boom! I'm back in 21. You and Walt Disney, Ted Williams. Yep, bingo. That's what I'm saying. I've yeah, heard about man. it. Also, maybe send me to Pandora like they did with uh, Jacob Salt. Yeah, that'd be cool. Know. Send me to Pandora. Put me in an avatar. It's like eight years. So let's yeah. get back to football. And the aliens, by the way, never going to be able to beat us in football. So we need to remember that. Yep. Mm -hmm. No matter how big, oh, scary, or I freaks hope. they are, they ain't going to be able to run Oklahoma drills. No. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to be able to run powers nope. in ISOs. So when they come to this rock floating through space, we're going to put them in pads, and we'll let them know who we are. Mm -hmm. Okay? Damn. Let's just always remember that. Boom. That's what we have in our back pocket. Boom. So you guys can have all the science conversations you want to have. Let us sports folks let you know we got your back. When we need to alpha mm. these things, mm -hmm. we'll put some pads on them. That's right. And then we'll find out who's what in the galaxy. Well said. Now back to football. Connor has a question for you. They're tall and lanky, too. We got Wemby now. So if they want to play they, basketball. We're swatting their shit. Yeah. Guess mm -hmm. what? We got one. Yeah, you're damn right. Uh, Dan, my question has to do with the worst football team in uh, the country right now, the league. Some would say country, Kirk, on Thursdays at times. But – uh, first, two, uh, you, you don't believe in aliens because there's no proof. I'm not going to get into the whole religion thing here, but just something to think about. Jeez, uh, what are you? Whoa. With, with that, with that, being that guy said, went to Catholic school next I did. year. With, hey, I thought we were doing football. You're a bad guy. Back to football. I just wanted to just throw a couple things in there just to you know get my thoughts out. But uh, 
Mac Jones isn't good right now, Dan, and saying that he's not good right now is a massive understatement. Uh, I, I saw you post something about how the mechanics on that interception, which some are coining worse than the butt fumble play, that interception in the red zone in Germany, that you know he's not playing like he had his rookie year with McDaniels. What the hell is going on? Uh, kind of safe to say that his time in New England's done because of the quarterbacks that could be coming out and the top pick and uh, – just kind of explain to me what he's seeing on this play because <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's about 500 million people on the planet that could have thrown that ball maybe a little better than Mac Jones here. Yeah, so this is one of the worst misses of his career. Um, okay, so this ball to Gesicki, it's the right read. It's just missed by probably a minimum of 10 feet. So you see how Connor, <laughs> like, yards. he's fading away? Yeah. Like, he's... His feet are parallel to the line of scrimmage, and he's fading backwards. He it's looks like, like a wuss, imagine, Dan. Yeah, I well, mean, but that's like been it. the story. Now, th this has gone on all year, um, and I, I, f I feel like I've pointed this out very, uh, very much so often about Mac. So there, there's people who can and cannot do this. There are guys who are so athletic and so physically talented, Josh Allen being one, Lamar, Patrick, um, uh, Dobbs, that, that, Kenny. that are capable Matthew. of like, mechanically yeah. maybe Blanco. not being ideal and still making really big time throws. Mac is not that person. Um, and so, so there's been it? way too, he had, he had an example, at, um, Two weeks ago at home with Ramondre Stevenson on a double move that if yep. he just steps into the throw, it's a touchdown and he fades away. So now the question is, well, why is he fading away so much? Okay, so he's fading away so much. Two parts. One, the offensive line is awful. I would tell you, I think New England, I have AQ answer this. I think their offensive line is one of the worst in the NFL in the last like three seasons. Okay, he's so that, there is a byproduct of that. Number two, it seems that this is not something that he has emphasized. Like this is something that you can absolutely get better at, improve on, control, and it's not happening in New England. So that's what happens on the interception. Um, it Why is it all happening? Their roster is very talent depleted. Um, and I think it's fair to say I'm a Mac guy. I still think that he could be a good player in the NFL. I don't know, great, uh, good player, starter in the NFL. Um, but it's fair to say, like, if you're New England, it's a complete rebuild. It's a complete, yes. total rebuild. Yes. Do you want to do that with Bill Belichick? And do you want to do that with Mac Jones? Those are the two questions they have to answer. That's a huge rebuild. You get rid of Bill Belichick. Yeah, now, so. Diana Rossini reported this weekend that people around the building are assuming or preparing for a mutual parting of ways between Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. He will go coach somewhere else if that is the case. Will he be the GM as well? We assume, but who knows? Mm -hmm. That would be bananas. Yeah. That would be a... Colossal move in the NFL news yeah. cycle. I've heard that. I've heard more and more of that over the past like week. I'm not a reporter, all that stuff, but I have heard that. You're a journalist. I I, I, yeah, um, I, I have heard that that's going to be the case, and it's kind of uh, who who knows the likelihood of it. But I've I've heard that that's going to happen, and I've heard the location is already kind of determined as well. Where he's going? L.A. Chargers. You I'm not giving. Uh, yeah. yeah. I just, I have heard that. Who'd, heard you hear, who'd you hear from? I've heard that. <laughs> People that know it's just like friends yeah, at the yeah. soccer Come game. On, we yeah. saw, right. You saw your daughter on Westport, another undefeated year. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, the, 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 job, the, the, nine, the nine new girls. No, I, I mean, it's people who know what they're talking about. Hmm. Shafty? Bill? Where, where's it going? Did, did you they, talk to Bill? Did they tell you what Bill was doing outside of the house? In the ring camera? Did you see mm -hmm. what that was? Because he's a dog dude. yeah he he's, is absolutely yoked for a seven year old yeah he's got that barrel chest too he walked out just in case <laughs> do you something. think he would go on game day weekly and take his ch shirt off for i'm everyone? sick of that but I, it is that is not my what am i supposed to, they won't stop yeah and we can't do a show chanting last week they didn't do it though i would like to let james you look great Thanks. you look great Thanks. you look you look great i say I'm, I'm on some science and uh <laughs> and some hard work you know i'm having a I'm having a good time right now. I'm moving a lot of weight, too. I feel very explosive. You pressing uh, weights? Moving weights, yeah. Squat rack? 
No, 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 no. Not putting a bar on mine back ever again. Nope. Yeah. nope. I saw you hitting the lunges yesterday, though. Lunges, new, new addition. I heard that's like a real super cheat code. Uh, you know, Corey Gregory's been pitching that <laughs> yeah, for yeah. a while. Sure, okay. So I start doing them. Boy, that one's tough. I was supposed to not get sore. That's what I was told. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told. You, you won't get sore anymore, pretty much. I did these lunges last week. Buddy, couldn't get off the shitter. Ooh, it was... Nice. It was tough. My legs, obviously, good. So, yeah, I'm getting in shape. Not as much as you, though. You're in great shape. You're always in good shape, though, it feels like. Yeah, I don't have any muscles, so it doesn't matter. You have good shoulders, though. Yeah, good small muscles. I get so many people come up to me about that. They come <laughs> up to me and they're like, hey, can I ask you something? I'm like, yeah, what's up? And I think they're going to ask me something about, like, football or working at ESPN. They're like, that shoulder thing, does it actually work? <laughs> yeah. Go on. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it works. Yeah. You're the new guy that wore the blue polo all the time? Billy Mays. Danny Mays. Rest in peace. Billy is his Danny name. Mays. Miss you, Bill. Yeah, Danny might Mays. be his kid that uh, is now well, the... He's, yeah, he's Danny Mays. Yeah, rest in peace, Billy Mays. What if that? What if that's you? Sham Wow, the Ooh. shoulder thing, maybe even Vaporizer. Yep. That could be your thing. You could be the new spokesperson guy. Like Flex, like the Flex, flex Seal. Flex Seal, yes. flex seal. boom. Bill yeah, Swift. on one of those boats. Build a yeah. boat mm -hmm. out of it. Yeah. 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 What a legend. Yeah. Mike Lindell with the uh, My Pillow Could do that. Go that route too, Dan. You yeah. I feel like I'm Politics. Uh, just physically a, a better presentation, hopefully, you know, so I, I don't know if I'm there yet in life. Right. Um, people were saying that the backdrop was fake. I don't think that's real. Clouds are moving, right? Behind you, clouds are moving. It's just a parking lot. Yeah. Where are you? Up in Bristol? Fairfield? Yeah. yeah, up at Bristol. I came up. Uh, Rabel's up here. Paul Rabel's up here. They're announcing um, like the, the oh, like yeah. home cities for all the PLL teams. Oh, so I'm going to hop on. Whoops. Yeah. You're going to hop on? What are you going to do? Just kind of be there and let Paul do his thing. But I came up a little early. You need to get as many Notre Dame boys on a squad that you're cheering for as you can. Uh-huh. Those Cavanaugh's. I got a son who wants to go to Notre Dame to play lacrosse. Yeah. It's going to be tough. Those boys, uh, those lads are really good with the twine. Yeah, you yeah. better hit the wall, Dan. Yeah, you better tell them to get to work. Uh-huh. You know, because whenever, uh, when back. these golden domes, when these gold domes right here. Boom. Boom. When these gold domes hit the field, mm. there's a sense of pride, there fear, oh, and right. a championship quality of lacrosse. Hell yeah. That is a gorgeous helmet. That is gorgeous. It is. Hey, out of the, out of the, the five on camera right now, if you had to rate the golf swings, five to one, where are they? Golf swings? What? Yeah, yeah, because I've seen social media, so where are they? So Tone is a baseball player swinging a golf club, but he still thinks it's a bat. Like, not even okay. attempting to change at all. You know how <laughs> okay. some baseball players try to change their swing to golf, and they, like, utilize the benefits of baseball to help them with golf? Tone says, uh-uh, I'm still... Tone does a full yep. that stance up. baseball swing with the golf club. So I think he is at five. I'll say okay. I'll say con man is fourth. I'm yeah. done with golf. But it, his no. brother's a scratch golfer, though. Oh shit. Brother's a scratch golfer. Yeah. So did his brother get the all the athleticism in the family? Actually, oh. that Actually he did. I mean, he's good at everything. It's the worst. But did he, yeah. did he tackle you? AJ Dillon? Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> have a great jumper. Bingo. Nope. Nope. Think about toxic table, both of them lefty, so it's certainly something. Uh I'll put Ty. I'll put myself probably at third, then tie, then D butt with Butler birdies yes. at number one. Golf yesterday. Because he's working. D butt swing looks good. I did yeah. golf yesterday. Yeah, he's fall, hey, fall golf? That's beautiful. Can't ten beat. out of ten. The best. Can't beat it. First yeah, it's experience. Perfect weather. Cannot be. Yeah. yeah, fall football, you could probably beat it. But yep, sure. Right. Golf, anyway. golf sucks. Hey, you're having a great Orlovsky season. If I make this into that thing, Ooh. you're going to give some money away. How much? Hold on. How much? Ten people, five hundred dollars. <laughs> There's no chance. Oh, uh, <laughs> a little higher. It's a hockey ball. It's just a lacrosse stick. Can't do it. Man, I should have whipped that thing. All right, Dan. Have a great day, pal. We appreciate your time. Later, fellas. Good to be with you. Hell yeah. That was sick. Hell much yeah, much bro. mana. Hell yeah, Dan. This is all you too. Hell yeah, Dan. Disconnected. Matrix. Right. AJ Hawk with an eye or without an eye? Ooh. In the next hour. Same with Aaron Rodgers. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take three. three.
Obviously, this is a conversation starter for everybody when they're talking about the dynasty, and there's still Raiders fans that are pissed off about this. Here's the game plan. Go out there in the middle of a snowstorm and make a kick that you're not supposed to make at all from 45 yards. This is the Patriots season on the line. Do you remember this moment right here in your head? Were you scared to death? Were you fucking pumped? I would say I was probably more scared to death as I'm watching the tuck rule review and realizing, holy shit, we get the ball back. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's coming all down to you, man. This will be a 45-yard attempt. That's Vinatieri's luck from this distance of late. Once I got out on the field, I really had three thoughts. First and foremost, try to attack the ball, but stay light on your feet. Just like anybody, you're running on ice. If your cleats don't stick, you're falling on the ground, and then the ball's going to end up hitting your center right in the back of the head. I wasn't thinking about missing four of the last five, if that's truly what was going on. For me, it was all about, hey, you know, these guys aren't going to be able to get a good rush. Get it straight and get it above the line of scrimmage. And thank goodness, as it left, and I saw that they didn't block it, then it was all about i don't know if it's going to have enough distance in this snow you know let's hope for the best and, and i really didn't know until the the referees at the back of the end zone raised their hands i couldn't really <laughs> see it i couldn't tell if it was good or not oh yeah because it's a snow globe what a kick what a moment obviously that would go on to launch a dynasty that the nfl will never see again yeah. or before what a kick what a moment here's an overtime you gotta make another one substantially easier kick not just because of the distance but we called a timeout we cleaned a bunch of ground this is the one time that a coach actually icing me probably benefited us right because it gave my offensive lineman with the big size 16 cleats to get out there and move a little bit more ground and you know not to say a game winner is ever easy but this one compared to the one uh, quarter before that was substantially different. So you're coming out here sighing a little bit of relief. Oh, thank God. I can see the ground. <laughs> I'm not going to fall. Right. We've right. already exactly. done this. Exactly. This is no problem. Tied. And then you murder that ball dead center. And then obviously in the Super Bowl, you have like a 49-yarder that you hit at the top of the upright. Couldn't have been a better ball, I don't think. You hit a cleaner. You have something inside of you, okay, that not a lot of people have. And Joe Burrow seemingly is a guy that has it. What is that? I would love to tell you that I was born with or I developed the ability to, you know, be a clutch under pressure. I do think that there are certain people that are born with the want or the ability to say Michael Jordan, you know, Tiger Woods, Mariano Rivera. These guys are, or, and ladies are the type of people that go, I want the game coming down to me. I want to be the reason, LeBron, you know, I want to be the reason why we win or lose. I was kind of that same person, you know, playing soccer as center midfield and baseball, I either wanted to pitch or catch. I leave it there. I know what you're thinking. No, 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 no. I know you. No, no. Anyway, but I, just, I, I always wanted to, you know, be in the middle of the game and be the reason why. So once I get to football, obviously 59 minutes of the game, I'm standing on the sideline, but the following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome! To our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 14th, 2023. Hour two of this program starts now. Football! Happened last night, and the Buffalo Bills have some problems, and the Denver Broncos are on their way to the moon. Hell yeah. We'll talk about that, obviously, for the next two hours. I'm joined by an incredible duo called the Talks the Table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Also, one half of the Hammer, Don Cowboys Tone Diggs, nine-year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB. That'll happen in the third hour today on YouTube and ESPN Plus. Darius J. Butler. And joining us now, live from Columbus, Ohio. Yesterday, he was a one eye, one eye, one eye man. Mm. He's also a college football national champion, a right. Super Bowl champion, right. a Ryder Cup winner, right. a COVID survivor, right. a man who eats adversity for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it comes in the form of grilled chicken with no flavor. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. I cannot wait to see yeah, what he's so yeah, pumped. Yeah. AJ Hawk. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. So cool, dude. Wow. You look so cool right now. Yep. Yep. Got the patch off, fellas. So we're, we're on what the is, men. What does your eye look like? Come on. What's your eye look like? Uh, well, actually, I think it looks okay. I could, I could open it more. Oh, oh, not bad. Okay. It's, not, it's not bad at all. It just gets real weird and runny and stuff. And the lights, obviously, are awesome. Oh, so you're going to awesome, survive. So. Bro, you kind of got a little. Oh, yeah. It, it's just it's sitting a little low there, yeah. probably to protect it. But it, you look a lot better than I could have imagined. Lazy, yeah. Two days after a third of a cornea getting ripped out by a guy named Axel. Yeah, it's good. I got to go back tomorrow morning to, to make sure. But, yeah, he said it's uh, at least it's starting to, to heal a little bit. What, are they good. pumping stem cells in there? I mean, that's healing Must quick. Be smart. That's healing real quick. I got quick. some gel. I got some goopy gel that's stuck in there right now. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, goopy we're gel. Three gel. times a day. Uh, goopy, what are you What's sending? Is, is it Canadian? What What's do you mean? Some goo for his eye? Let's talk about the game last night before our uh, distinguished guest is, joins us. Um, Buffalo Bills got some problems, dude. Now, granted. Game-winning field goal could have won that game. Yeah. What are we talking today if they end up winning that game? Yeah, if they don't have 12 people on the field for that last field goal, what are we saying about the Buffalo Bills? Ah, you squeak, they don't play their best ball, but they still win a game on primetime on Monday night in November. Yada, yada, yada. That's convo. Instead, it's this Bills team is problematic because they had 12 people on the field for a game-winning field goal. In week 10 of the actual NFL season, not the preseason, let alone how it looks on the offense and defense. Obviously, Russell Wilson looked like old Russell Wilson. So congrats to the Denver Broncos on getting a massive win. And for Sean Payton and Russ turning it around. Also, Vance Joseph turning around from earlier in the year when they mm -hmm. let Miami hang 70 on them. But the story of the day is Buffalo Bills fire their offense coordinator this morning. What does the future look like for them? And are they dead, AJ? Are they dead? Is that the comment? Yeah. Well, when I hear that they, they fire their offensive coordinator, we saw how that game ended. If for some reason they didn't have 12 men on the field and they win that game, are they still firing Ken Dorsey last night? No, no way. way. No. Okay. So, like, I mean, I, I don't know what the problem is. I obviously have, have no idea what the answers may be. But, yeah, it just seems like that's what's so funny about games. You know that, Pat. Like, one thing here or there, the tiniest little thing, and everybody's life is different on both sides. Wins cover up all your warts. I mean, it happens mm -hmm. literally everywhere. And then when you lose, people are like, oh, been waiting to say this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So even if you go on a six, seven game win streak and it's ugly, 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 for instance, Pittsburgh Steelers, it's just like, this hasn't been good, but we win. This hasn't been good, but we win. This guy has been problems, but we win. So whenever you don't say it, and then a loss comes and it's like, Oh, yeah, remember three weeks ago we were saying this guy was a pro. He still is, by the way, in the loss. It's like it almost just builds up the explosion even more. So them losing on primetime, obviously not their first first loss of the season, but they're the by age, they're the oldest team in the NFL. If the Hembo stat that I got this morning was right, 27.6 years of age is the average age for that team, oldest in the NFL. It's like they got money in a lot of places on that team, and they're still not able to go. It's like... That's not great. And if you're Beals Mafia, you got to be so confused. We're all very confused by this whole thing developing. Yeah, it makes no sense. Like this entire little era of the Bills after that Chiefs lost the with 13 seconds left. Like that's what a lot of people are going back to, especially with all the drama in the offseason with Leslie Frazier. But Lombardi show, talks about it all the time. You have to like see what the team shows you. And the Bills do this every week. Like it feels like there hasn't been one game, maybe the Dolphins game, you could point to as the game that they were unbelievable because even the Raiders win early in the season when they blow them out. You know, McDaniels, Jimmy G, who knows? But it, it's brutal in Buffalo. Yeah, it's the post-Tom Brady era for the Patriots as well. And Bill mm -hmm. Belichick might be gone, so the Buffalo Bills fans saw a lot of opportunity. Yeah. yeah. They saw a lot of opportunity in that AFC. Speaking of, joining us now, he's a quarterback in the AFC East. He's a man who is a four-time NFL MVP. Hell yeah. He's a man that's currently defeating an Achilles surgery faster than any human mm -hmm. in the history of Achilles surgeries. He's slinging the pigskin every week, but this week, what's up? Is everything okay? Uh -oh. Ladies and gentlemen, host of every single Tuesday, second hour, for the last four years, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stand in brotherhood. Okay, nice. appreciate that. Appreciate that. So solidarity, guys, solidarity. Uh, uh, is... Did you just have one of those laying around or what? <laughs> No, we just uh, fashioned this together just oh, now. Just good. for you, buddy. Hey, yeah. have you heard looks about... Good, thanks. Hey, did you... Uh, could you have imagined that Axel would take a third of his cornea out of his eye on a random Sunday, Aaron, uh, as Uncle Aaron over there in the Hawk House? 
Listen, injuries that happen at the house, there's always some mystery, some Whoa. shrouds of mystery oh. around them. So I guess we have to take AJ's word <laughs> for it on this one. But there could be some, it could be a bedroom injury. That's all I'm saying. Whoa. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. Been hanging around. Uh, all I know is that, that, you know, <clears throat> all I know is that him and Laura have, you know, four, you say 10, but I believe four, maybe it could be more. Beautiful children, Four. and the spark is still very strong. Wow, Laura! And you never know what the actual <laughs> cause of his injury could be. Wow! Blame it on the kids seems like a real low-hanging fruit. Wow! But, uh, I, I didn't think about that, Aaron. Jeez Louise! That means Laura's in on blaming Axel. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what that would mean, right? Oh, no, on, let's Laura. not let's not bring her, let's not bring her into it. Well, you know, she can't help yeah, it. That's, she's, how, if she's, that's how that works. If right? she's the dominant, <laughs> if, she, if she's the dominant human in the bedroom, she can't help it. You know? Yeah, it's not her fault. It's not her fault. Chopper. All right, oh, great let's material. uh, let's move along. I don't know Good how we start. Do. Hot yeah, start. Hot, hot great start. start. Yeah. What well, is one of the greatest starts of all time? Uh, he's recovering from an eye. You're standing in solidarity with him. Uh, to return to favor, AJ will also wear those ridiculously large shoes that you're wearing <laughs> for your Achilles because you two, you know, one eye, one good Achilles. Let's talk about where you're at, what you're talking about to oh. Melissa Stark. Melissa yes. Stark, okay. Mid-December was the report uh, during Sunday Night Football. You didn't throw on Sunday because you just weren't feeling it for some reason. Is that the plan? And why didn't you throw? Because those videos, I think, were not only us, but Jets fans are like, yes, Love feed us more of those. With Devontae on the other side, too, I thought there was a chance maybe, yeah. <laughs> you know, Devontae would happen upon the other end of that. Why didn't you throw? Do we have a setback? Where do we sit in mid-December the goal? Sorry. A lot there. Go with it however you want. A lot of questions there. <laughs> yeah, just roll. Uh, if, I, if I hadn't seen Devontae the night before, then I probably would have gone out there and, and maybe seen him and, and uh, at least thrown him a couple of balls. But Sunday was my off day starting – uh, my rehab process, and that's obviously shifted a little bit. You know, we had a uh, so it didn't last week Sunday. You know, we had a Monday night game, so I was off Sunday. I flew uh, red eye, uh, so Monday being able to move around stuff so that was more in the rehab uh, mindset where I'm not just stationary all day. And uh, the previous weeks, I've used kind of my flying day as my my off day. So uh, this last week Saturday, um, I got a great uh, long session to rehab in and flew. A, Flew up to Vegas, had dinner with Devante, um, walked around uh, a little bit, as was noted, a um, couple fan interactions. And then Sunday was a complete off day. So on the off days, I really want to get myself completely off. Like, obviously, I'm still walking and pacing the sidelines, but uh, I need at least one day off every single week. So that was uh, that was planned there and uh, no setbacks. As far as what I talked to Melissa Stark about, um, I never said anything definitive. Uh, she talked about uh, having a conversation with my amazing doctor. There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, she talked to my doctor about if it would be insane to try and come back in, uh, you know, three months. And he responded about, you know, the fact that when you bring together a specific type of surgery with a specific patient, with uh, the specific amount of uh, stubbornness and desire to get back on the field, then and obviously playing quarterback, then there's a possibility. But um, nothing's changed as far as my timeline. It's we got to be in the mix, and I got to be healthy, and I definitely still want to come back. That's awesome. Go ahead, AJ. So you're telling us that there's a chance. Have when will that be, though? Can you give us a date? Give us a game. What the hell is that? What? What are you drinking? You had all that. Frothing. You had all that time. You had all that time, <laughs> and that's Probably. the question you came up oh, with. Oh no, it's that journalism. I could give you a specific date. That's right. Yeah. Uh, wait, are you okay? Are you walking the on the beach yet? You got, do you have the the dorsiflexion that you talk about that you need? Can you get on your toes? Uh, yeah, I'm still doing a lot of different modalities. Age, mm. a lot of modalities every single day. Um, I know you love that, um, but I haven't. Uh, how heavy is I that bag right there? The, <laughs> I For real, I think that matters. Is the tequila in that bag 15, 20 ounces worth of stuff in that bag? How heavy is the bag? Listen, there's zero tequila in there. There were zero bongs in there. Wow. Oh. Um, and 
I don't know what I was. I got a lot. I'm sidetracked now. What day? Tequila AJ wants to know bombs. what day. You 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 absolutely just question his journalism talents. Yeah, yep. I think is what you did originally. But there is no set date. Is that accurate? That's an accurate. Uh, no, there's no set date. I mean, it could it could change. If I have a great week, uh, you know, this week and next week, that could be accelerated. If we are not in it in three or four weeks, that could, you know, that could. Uh, Take it a different way, but I expect us to be in it, and I expect to come back. So that's about all I can tell you at this point. Aaron, how bad does this suck? This sucks. This sucks. Only looking out of one eye right now with tape covering this one. I couldn't even imagine what our big barbarian jawline friend is experiencing over there. Have we have we seen what it looks like yet? I haven't. I haven't been uh, been watching the first time. Have we seen it? Doesn't look that bad right now. It doesn't look yeah. that bad. Does it, does it look like no, it's uh, not Jack that bad. Black? It's just like it's in, just uh, dead. Like I can't just oh open my it. Oh really. God. It's yeah. not. A, it's all right. Yeah, it's not that red. It was super red before I got this gel in there. So we're we're almost one hundred percent probably. Who knows? You look like Jack Jack Black and Shallow Hal, same body type and same same eyes. Yeah. Remember when he puts the goop in his eyes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good guy. Good movie. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Jack Black is a great actor in that movie too. Great guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, well, ends up being not a yeah. Guy. And yeah, yeah, you get right. it. not being shallow. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Tony Robbins in that movie yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, shout out. Yep, that guy's the fake clapper. Oh yeah. Great voice. Yes. Great voice. Fake clapper. Mm-hmm. He motivates the hell out of people. Yep. Big time. Speaking of motivating the hell out of people, Good you know, goodness. people are saying because you're coming back so quick <laughs> that you actually don't have a torn Achilles. Have you heard? That's become an actual talking point that you didn't actually tear your Achilles. It, we, like, for instance, Megan Rapino. Thank you. Yeah, it sucks for us. I'm happy you yeah, decided. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm- yeah, at all. <laughs> yeah. It was terrible. I, I was getting dizzy. I was getting like sick to my stomach not being able to see out of one eye. Megan Rapino, though, after her last game, she tore her Achilles, I think, six minutes in or whatever mm-hmm. to her final game it was a a walk-off that she certainly could never prayed for the the whole entire combo though she said i'm calling aaron Rodgers because i would like to get this thing handled quickly i would like the recovery to happen quickly it's happening so fast the way you're doing it that there's people that think it's fake it has there been a lot of people that have reached out to you not just like athletes but other humans and is dr elitrosh know that this is kind of what people are going to expect now pretty much how you're healing you're like setting the tone in the conversation for what an achilles recovery could look like that's a lot of pressure but also pretty insane for some people to imagine yeah, I mean, I have some very interesting thoughts that ESPN would probably try and cut off the broadcast if I started really getting into Ooh. how I feel about about that stuff. But um, <laughs> what could that have been? Yeah, come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't even fathom <laughs> what saying. that. Could, I couldn't even fathom. <laughs> They're talking about your uh, Achilles. We're yeah. talking about your Achilles, but not maybe not being yeah, torn. The same. You love oh, conspiracies. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, the it, same people talking about that. You know, the, the, it's inter- entertaining the possibility of conspiracy about my Achilles. Could not possibly fathom a world <laughs> in which anything related to this beautiful experimental gene therapy could be. You know, it could have any any issues with that. Okay. Fascinating. All Fascinating. Right. right. Okay. So I just went into it. They probably just cut the feed. I don't give a shit. No, I don't think enough don't people know exactly what you're referring to there. But no. then people will find out, obviously, uh-huh. as we go. But yes, you are now being yeah. the conversation. All those big brains. All those big brains out there. Let me just let me just shoot you straight. Like there, there's not a lot of people that uh, have the unique situation that that I was in. I got hurt in the first first drive of the season. I don't want to retire. I want to come back. I got the best doctor in the country. My full-time job is rehab. And my mindset from the morning after the surgery, or the the injury, before I even got surgery, was I'm going to try and do something that nobody's done before. So I poured my entire energy and research into this. And, I mean, I wasn't even a question whether or not I was going to use Neil. It was, all right, what are the best rehab modalities? Where should I rehab? What can I do at home? What can I add to it? And who's done anything in this realm before? So I talked with a number of people who torn their Achilles. I learned, you know, listened to what they liked, what they, what worked. The majority of those people, you know, uh, a lot of them athletes, awesome people. And I'm so thankful for the time. They were on different timetables, though. They were thinking, listen, we're going to get this thing back and get back to competition, but not in a rush. And I feel like I want to get back. So I'm more rushed because my time is uh, is nearing the end. I don't have as many years left as a Clay Thompson or some of these, you know, amazing athletes who've been hurt, you know, earlier in their career. 
um, I want to get back on the field. So my whole goal the entire time is how can I get back on the field? Uh, what can I do from a diet standpoint, from a modality standpoint, from a daily rehab standpoint in order to put myself in a position to play as quick as possible? Um, but yeah, it was, it was ruptured. It was fixed by the best doctor in the land. And my entire focus from September 13th has been rehab and get back on the field. Those modalities have been batting a thousand, apparently, from outside looking in with you walking, especially having to walk the entire length of that football field. And then the gentleman, ah, Steve, ooh, uh, the dude you tapped on the shoulder, he was wearing your jersey, and you said nice jersey, took a picture with him. He reported that you actually sped walk, mm -hmm. walked off. Yep. So as a Jets fan, which I believe he was, when he saw you move, he was like, hey, He's coming back soon when you do this. Every time you do it, I think you give hope to people who either in the future tear their Achilles and you give hope to Jets fans that you're going to get back on the field this season. Now, you've said it. To get back on the field this season, the boys got to be in it. We just lose a tough one. Okay, well, that was a tough one against the Raiders. The Raiders having a good time right now. Mm -hmm. They're smoking cigars. Antonio Pierce is showing up with hydraulics and drop tops. I mean, it is an awesome time to be a Raider. For the Jets, though, it seems like it's the same song and dance here. Defense doing its thing. Offense not having any success at all. What do you say in those moments? How hands-on are you with the offense when you're back in there? And what are your thoughts about the Jets going forward here? How do we get it fixed? Yeah, it's tough because we're nine games in. You know, I think a lot of the the issues that we're we're having are ones that we've had for a lot of the season. You know, we're uh, not being efficient in the red zone, not being um, opportunistic on third down. Uh, we're very low in both those categories. Uh, this game, we actually got in the end zone. Looked like twice. Uh, you know, Zach got in, got called back, but he was out of bounds, which was a you know millimeter. Uh, call there, and then we scored a rushing touchdown, called back on a holding, took points off the board, had another reverse uh, called back on a holding that was a first down that put us in good position. We had some other opportunities to score points, I think. Um, so it's a lot of the same uh, same things hurting us every week. But you don't get the ball in the end zone, you're not going to win many games. It doesn't matter who's playing defense for you. And our defense has been fantastic. But four field goals, uh, you know, six points previous week, 13 the previous week, and a win, not good enough. Um, so um, you know, there, there's uh, a lot of uh, geniuses out there with ideas about uh, how to fix the whole thing. Uh, but in actuality, very simple. If you watch the film, you could see where the issues lie. And uh, there's, you know, there's plays to be made. There's uh, opportunities that are out there, and we're just not getting it done. Yeah, that's, you know, watching, it's tough. And I don't watch the film of the Jets. I apologize. I see them live. That's enough for me. But it is like the whole the whole offense, I feel like, in Hackett's mind, and this is no shot at any quarterback, let alone Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson gets enough heat already. That BYU throw at the end there, Hail Mary, pretty sweet. But it's like, I feel like Hackett last year thought there was a chance you were going to Denver. You did not. This year thought you were going there. You did not. It's like an interesting, because Hackett's taking it right now, Bob. On hard. Hack is taking it hard on the shins. You, you hear that? You see that noise or no? Yeah, yeah, I see it. I, love I won it. MVP twice in the same offense, so <laughs> I'm, 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 a, I'm a believer in the I'm a believer in the offense, and um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of positions you gotta you gotta play better. But, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's easy right now to to throw it at the, the usual suspects, you know. Zach and 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 Nathaniel, but there's uh, there's a lot of positions that uh, that need to need to play better. I appreciate you sticking up for your guys. Obviously, it's not easy for you to have to chit chat, especially whenever you're not playing, so you can't affect it all. But on the sidelines, there has been some moments with you that people have seen. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Aaron, and a lot of people are saying too, like, yeah, well, it's pretty easy when Aaron Rodgers is your quarterback in those offenses. But this weekend. Uh, obviously, the streak kind of continued where it was mo all field goals and no touchdowns. And then there was a moment on the broadcast, actually, where they are kind of zoomed in on Hackett. He calls his play. Yeah, here it is. And then it quickly goes right to you because you have the headset on and they want to see what your reaction is to it. Um, how difficult is it to kind of like sit on the sidelines, hear the plays, and then watch – kind of the execution be screwed up and is it tough not to like over coach if you will Zach and kind of try to over help him too much because obviously you're one of one and not every single quarterback can do the things that you can do in that offense 
Yeah, Connor, I can't tell what's on your shirt, but I'm guessing it's uh, it's nice. What do you got going today? Sea turtles today, Aaron. Second oh, day in a row. Sea turtles. Mm -hmm. Nice. Did you wash it, or is it a new shirt? No, I haven't, turtles? I haven't washed any of these shirts yet. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they shrink. Sometimes they shrink up. Yeah. Bingo. Exactly. You yep. get it. Yeah. Smart. S smell. Um, That's fine. First of all, I don't. I don't overcoach Zach. I know how. I know what it's like on game day. I'm not. I don't need a lot of uh, uh, comments on game day. It's less is more. I was mirrored that by Tom Clements way back in the day, where very simple instructions and help on the sidelines. Not too much information. There'll be times on the headset where I'll just say. Hey, TMI guys, like, it's too much information right now. Like, let's scale it back. And on the sidelines, I help them, uh, you know, here and there. But, uh, you know, it's more very specific. If I see something specific, I'll sell, tell it to them. There's a couple times where I was kind of on the field uh, walking out there and, and just remind them a couple things. But for the most part, he's got enough guys in his ear. I don't need to be another voice. I'm helping him. I'm helping uh, some of the other position groups during the game. I'm obviously on the headset. But, um you know, it's interesting with the catch, catching the broadcast and then what is actually, you know, going through my mind at some point. Um, you know, there's so many things that happen on there and there's side conversations while the – after the headset goes off at 15, you know, the, the coordinator can't talk to the quarterback. So there's conversation going on between myself and Todd Downing up in the booth or, or one of the position coaches possibly even Hackett. Um, we called 34 Wanda on that play. It was third and two and um, – they were in a Bronco front, uh, said five down lineman, one backer. And we actually had a really good play pre-snap. Now, Bill Spillane, or Bob Spillane was, yeah. was the front side of the run, and we just need to be a little bit more vertical on the left side. Uh, the three technique kind of slanted uh, to the uh, uh, across the guard's face, the A-gap. It should have been, you know, a little more vertical um, by Mackay there, and we probably would have a good play. But um, – and that's what happens, you know, it, it, uh, you know, third and two and you run it and, and Bob looks unblocked and makes a tackle and you're like, oh, it's a shit call, you know. But it comes down to the execution uh, and, uh, you know, Mackay's been playing incredible. So it's not just, you know, I'm not saying a lot of I love Mackay. Like he's one of my favorite guys on the team. I think he's been, uh, you know, our most consistent lineman this year. He's been playing incredible. But we need all 11 on every play to, to do their job in order for us to, uh, to be able to, to – you know, move the sticks and get first downs. And, you know, when you're moving the ball and you're converting third down and, and converting the red zone, the offense looks incredible. You know, when you're struggling in situational football, you're going to have a hard time winning. And uh, there's, again, not just one culprit. You know, there's been enough blame to go around to a lot of people. And honestly, even though I mentioned Mackay, like, not much for him. I think he's played he's played pretty damn good, and I'm really proud of him. Um, but we got to play more consistently in every facet. And, you know, yeah even if I'm playing quarterback, I'm not going to like every call. And I'm not able to do the whole, like, I can't hear you. What was the call? <laughs> and I, maybe I should change this one. Um, you you got to roll with it. And, and even if I didn't like that call when I was out there, we have a six-man box. We got to be able to block that thing up and run wand up there for, for three yards and move the sticks and get a first down. That's hilarious to think about you telling Zach immediately after hearing it. Eh, you don't, you don't <laughs> hear it. You don't hear it, Zach. You don't. That's old school. That's you know. That's something that it's every mannerism you do on a sideline though is going to be documented. You know, like that is just how it is. So however it gets taken is going to be a storyline. Who knows what was happening when you shook your head there? But I do appreciate the fact that you're talking to everybody on that thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, what the hell's going on over here? What do we got cooking over there? Have you enjoyed it? Huh? Maybe become a coach in the future? Ooh. Huh? No, nah, man, I can't guard my desk. I can't, I can't be in the business of garden desks like that. Too much time yeah. sleeping on couches. The coaching life is a bad one, man. I, I, it's I, a tough one. Yeah. I those, guys, those guys grind hard, and, and many of them will, will tell you about it, too. <laughs> they certainly will. Go ahead, AJ. What do you think uh, – like, how do teams honestly stay together when you, when you lose? You look around the league, and like, the NFL is crazy right now, but – Obviously, things become problems when you lose games. Oh, all of a sudden, the ball bounces your way or your, your kicker makes this kick. We win the game. We don't talk about it. It's kind of swept under the rug. Why is it so hard, I feel, I feel like, when teams lose that we just all the little stupid things always come out? And How would you kind of keep a team together? Well, I think you mentioned it right before we came on, like how ridiculous this league is. I think about uh, in 20, uh, 2012, we played – uh, Minnesota in the last game of the season, we're playing for the two seed and they're playing to get in the playoffs. You remember this age. Um, and <clears throat> Adrian was going for 2000 yards as well. And he went off 
and went nuts in the second half. And we were actually, you know, pretty damn good on offense that day. I think we'd lost a, a close one a game in the 30s. Adrian scored late to kind of put it away. Um, if we win that game, Minnesota misses the playoffs, Chicago gets in the playoffs, Lovey Smith doesn't get fired, who knows what other dominoes happen uh, after that. Obviously, Chicago kind of went into a tailspin uh, minus Lovey, and it wasn't just Lovey. I mean, uh, they ended up getting rid of Brian and Lance and Peanut and kind of everywhere they made that team go. But one kind of game, and a game that we actually you know, were ahead for a decent amount of it and, and could have and probably should have won, uh, can change the whole fortunes. Look at last night. I was watching the game at the end there. Um, you know, you have plenty of time. It was a run on field goal, but you know, Pat, like I, in the first half, that was excellent execution. You know, they had, they, they threw it right over the ball. They ran off the field quickly. You had the guys coming on doing the, uh, you know, the, uh, the eligible thing. I thought it was a beautiful, yeah, we got the clip right here. This is fantastic. Yeah, it's right? beautiful. It's Mayday, time. NASCAR, Mayday, They're, NASCAR. Mayday, They're running off the field. Here comes the, you know, the, 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 you know, the offense is supposed to run parallel line scrimmage. The special teams comes in from from the back, and they get it all lined up. Boom, 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 snap, kick, drills it. Awesome. That was with, I believe, 17 seconds-ish, maybe 18, something like that. The next one was 24 seconds. I don't have that clip as well. 24 seconds, you have a ton of time. It's full right? play both sides, Both sides of the ball. So – I couldn't even believe – I felt like that Denver was even too quick on that one. They snapped the ball with eight seconds left. Yes. I don't know if you saw that. All right. They snapped the ball with eight seconds left, and then he misses it. And what I'm saying is Buffalo had plenty of time to get their guys off the field. Now, let's let's live in an alternate reality, which I like to do the, those sometimes. So we live in an alternate reality. Oh, here, I lost it. Ultimate, <laughs> ultimate, ultimate uh, you know, alternate timeline where – they, you know, counted up on the field because they had 16 seconds, right, from the end of the beginning of the play to the, you know, the, the kick. For somebody out there to count to uh, 11, uh, maybe didn't count themselves as the as the 12th, but to count to 10 and then count themselves as the 11th and get off the field, get the 12th guy off the field, and misses a kick. Now Buffalo is what six and four, correct? Mm -hmm. They're five and four going in. Now they're six and four. And now the Broncos are three and six. So they look at the Broncos like, oh, they had a couple wins, but now they're kind of back to being a, you know, seller, the seller team. Buffalo, hey, we're back on the right track. Huge win, huge second half comeback. Um, that's the narrative. Ken Dorsey, I mean, I've seen him before, but do you fire him after a game where you won? Pretty hard to do. Yeah, probably not. Now you're five and five, right? Different narrative, different narrative for Broncos. They're four and five, and. Uh, you know, now we got the four and five uh, Jets coming into the five and five Buffalo Buffalo Bills, and game obviously takes on even more meaning. But I'm just it goes to show you this league is so fascinating. By one little thing can just change the trajectory of of uh, careers, you know, both coaching and player careers. Um, pretty wild. Lives, businesses, communities, cities. What? I mean, so much, there's so much that is just relying upon minuscule things. You're talking about counting to 11 or whatever. It's like, yeah, they didn't even need to do the NASCAR at the end. That's just a full play clock. That's just like, yeah, play ended. We're going out there. I agree. I but thought, Pat, Pat how, how wild is it that if you really break it down and think about it, and this is you know, maybe too personal, but um, there was somebody who was in charge of counting to 11 who is – because I don't know, I'm making a generalization here, but I don't think they're going to fire a guy, a, a offense coordinator after a win. I think it's that's pretty hard to do, right? There's a guy who's supposed to count to 11 on the teams that is indirectly or directly responsible for Ken Dorsey being fired. Jeez, damn! This guy's already having a bad day. Uh, I'm just saying that's that's, true. but that's the reality of our league, and that's why. Can. And let me and let me just wrap this whole this whole answer up. Like the most important thing, age to to finish is you got to stick together because we're literally in this together. One person can have a direct impact on somebody else's job that you don't even think they're related. So um, it's, it's a wild business, but that's what makes it beautiful. Team on me. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. 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 Got to stay together. Yeah. Now let's stick in Buffalo, though. Speaking of, uh, speaking of stick together, D-Bud has a question for yeah, you. Yeah, that guy um, who got Ken Dorsey fired, unfortunately, last guy that was in Josh Allen's helmet. Uh, super athletic quarterback, obviously super talented, can do a lot of special things. Um, and I think sometimes that hurts him, right? You obviously were a quarterback, pretty athletic, but you did a lot of your damage from the pocket. Had a lot of answers pre-snap. How do you kind of – 
almost tame Josh Allen's game to where he's doing more of those things from the pocket, getting answers pre-snaps and not depending so much on his, you know, legs or his superb uh, athletic ability? Yeah, good question, D. But um, I don't think there's a there's a you know easy uh, you know one one word one line answer to that. Yeah. Uh, first, I'm a big fan of Josh. I think he's a phenomenal player. I think he's got all the skill set. He can throw it. He can move. He can run. He can play on time. Playoff schedule. Um, but the great quarterbacks uh, are consistently on time. You know, they can play on time, and then you know they can do something extra. Uh, you know, some, and there's very few of those guys. But first and foremost, to be a, a consistent quarterback in the league, you got to play on time. And, and playing on time means you're throwing the ball in rhythm. And uh, I'm not sure if it's schematic stuff or, uh, you know, uh, routes or Josh not seeing it. Um, but, then, you know, I think with any quarterback that's trying to get back on, on track, you have to find rhythm consistency throws where a uh, quarterback can – uh, can throw uh, a hitch off a hitch, one hitch in rhythm uh, to a guy uh, or no hitch throws. And it doesn't all have to be, uh, you know, a quick game where you're just throwing three step or left, right in the gun. Um, but you need to find consistent throws on time. And I think just watching from afar there, a lot of their offense over the years has been Josh's incredible ability to scramble around and extend plays and digs and Davis uh, and those other guys working for them. Um, and it's an incredible part of their offense, right? They've, they've won a ton of games doing that. But in the end, it's kind of like basketball, and I made this analogy before. You know, there's great basketball teams who can get out and run and be in transition. But in playoff basketball, it comes down every single year to the half court, right? Who yeah. can get stops and who can execute the offense? In the NFL, in some of those big games, and especially in the playoffs, who can execute – on time from the pocket, and if you get some some of those plays outside, fantastic. But you need to be great and efficient on time in the pocket. And I don't think, and again, it, it, I don't think it's a Josh Soley issue. Um, I think he's a phenomenal player. I, I think there's a lot of things going to that. But you got to find ways for quarterbacks to have people open and then get them to throw it on time uh, to increase the efficiency, to increase the confidence. And then, then anything on top of that is just kind of icing on the cake. That other part can't be the sole offense. It to, really can't. you got to find ways to throw it on time. To further your point, I thought about this this weekend as I was watching a couple of different four boxes. Sure. Uh, you know, little teams out there doing my thing on YouTube TV. Teams that get down in the red zone and then just kick a field goal. It's like seemingly get very easy into the red zone and then they, they kind of get clamped. And then you find out who's good, I think, right? Is that is that a you, – you said half court for the NBA thing and then you talked about being able to execute in the pocket. I think like you learn in the red zone like who's actually good, who's actually creative, who can make the actual throws. It's like who can putt is normally who gets birdies in golf. It's like the red zone is the same exact thing. Am I accurately depicting that and is that how you see it as well? hundred percent. You know, let's just take the red zone. What happens in the red zone? The, uh, you know, windows uh, are smaller and everything happens quicker, right? Cause there's no field. They don't have to defend. I think D-Butt said this uh, yesterday, maybe, uh, but you don't have to defend some of the deep throws, right? Cause you got the back of the end zone, you got the sideline. So you have to be, you have to play on time in those situations. And, and it's, touchdown check down mentality but it's an efficiency like we were great for years in the red zone in 2020 we were 80 percent, which no one's ever done before uh in no the big deal no but big. what made us great then is that you know we called plays and i got the ball out on time you know so i was always you know you better to be early uh you know in the in the red zone better be late than pregnant for some people but um it's all about throwing the ball uh, in rhythm and on time. And when it, when you're in red zone, you just can't be late to stuff. So when you have a three step concept on one side, a five step concept on the other side, a combo combo footwork concept, you got to be early to the three step and be able to react to the five step combo on the other side. And there's plays every single week where that can be an issue. And and that's what I would you know talk about during the weeks with our guys about how the footwork changes on certain plays when you get inside the red zone and. I would say, you know, on the play that we had that Spillane picked off in the game the other night, that is a three and five combo play. So that should have been probably a left right and the ball goes to the flat or you reset back and throw it back to the other side. 
you know, and, and if you, if you miss your, uh, your footwork or if you're late you're pregnant. footwork, then there's, yeah. that's when the issues come in. So, um, we were great for years because I was early or we were moving, you know, when I was younger and could really move, you know, a lot of our offense was like one, two scramble alert, you know, and having Jordy and Randall and Greg Jennings and James Jones and, and obviously Tay, you know, who could understand the scramble drill, that became a huge part of our offense. But the beginning part before we even got to that was, do we have plays that we can throw the ball on time now where guys are open and you can be in early anticipate stuff. And, and that's how you be efficient at the quarterback position. That's how you, you win the situational downs. And that's how you don't uh, create an outrage for uh, your job or your quarterback's job or your, sorry, your coordinator's job to be, to be taken away. Was that the gold zone? Gold zone. We want gold. That was fun. That was Nathaniel Hackett's baby, right? Yeah. Wasn't that? <laughs> is is yeah it is. Okay, we still, still doing is. we still doing a gold zone. I haven't been in a gold zone meeting in a few weeks, so I'm not sure. But I assume uh, there's well, something something going on there. Well, maybe we need you back in the gold zone. <laughs> in there. Yeah, that's what we need. Achilles, Achilles first. We got to get that thing back. I'm, but, well, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be back there full time real soon. Um, real soon. Really? Ooh. Break? No, that's that's always been the plan. The plan has been uh, once we got to Thanksgiving was to be back there full time. You know, you know I how it works. Uh, I, I heard you make a you know slide side comment there, DB. But um, <laughs> uh, well, no, but we got some breaking you, news. That feels like that's ticker worthy. Yeah, yeah that's, definitely. that's ticker absolutely. worthy. You're going back to Thanksgiving. No, there's well, there's not. There, you know, it's the holiday season, right? You got Thanksgiving, you got my birthday, and you got Christmas coming up. Of course. Then you got AJ's. Then you got AJ's birthday. So you got four holidays in a row here. Right, New, New Year's Eve. Eve, five holidays. Yeah. Which New Year's Eve is before it is birthday. AJ is obviously born on his favorite day. Of January sixth, of yeah. course, that yeah. guy's birthday right over there. Bit of a dust up. Yep. Jack Del Rio. That guy right there. I was right here. That I was in right this attic. That's not hey, listen, <laughs> I wanna let everybody know we were doing this show on January seventh. And we had a lot of questions for this guy. Yeah, we want to let you know it was his birthday. We didn't know what he was up to. We had no idea what he was doing. Didn't know that many people were going to show up. I don't think. No. I think we need to find. We have some sleuths. Like, take a picture. This is his going out outfit. This could be. <laughs> this could be. There could be some. You know. They hey, just, that Viking was on yeah, the. That, that was Viking was speaker of the house. Look to the left, a little security guard with sunglasses. Yeah, Hold right. on. good jawline. Mm -hmm. Celebrating a birthday. Had a birthday sash on. Yeah. That could have been AJ. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, we you know, and and as someone who you know who who has enjoyed plant medicine from time to time, and that there are certain uh, you know servers of plant medicine who've been known to be called shamans, I find that term associated with uh, the Viking guy to be you know offensive, a little disappointing. Yeah, yeah. He's a vegan too. Remember? That's yeah. right. Yeah. The, the shaman was uh, the Viking shaman uh, uh, speaker of the house person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Went to jail as a vegan. They had to figure that one out. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, he said, "I'm not eating this." It's like, yeah, it's jail food, bub. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's supposed to be baloney, is what I was told when I was in jail. It's supposed to be a fake meat. How's that even a real thing? Interesting. You know, happy birthday, though, H. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yep. Happy, happy you gifted up. that guy a chance to be the speaker of the house. <laughs> Let's get back to uh, Sunday night football. Ty has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Aaron, uh, when you got hurt, I think most realistic people were like, okay, the, the outlook on the season changes a little bit for the Jets. And I assume it's because you're there, but you would obviously know being in New York whenever you go back better than we would. But how is it? I mean, you guys are four and five. Season's obviously not over. Sure, the offense hasn't looked great, but... Like anytime they're talking about New York in general, it's just about how the Jets suck when the Giants are maybe the worst <laughs> team in the NFL in like the last fifteen years. Like why is that? Do you guys hear any of that? Or or is that just, you know, like it doesn't matter either way? That the Giants suck and they're not talking about it as much? Is that the question? Well, I just mean like what why are they? Like why why does no one mention the Giants at all when it comes to like New York? They're just talking about how bad you guys are when you're four and five and the Giants are getting beat by like thirty five points every single week. It's probably, you know, the giant that giant propaganda. They're you know, yeah. they Bruce. probably own the media own the media and they're making sure that nobody's talking about I'm just talking about the Giants. That's you, Bruce. Yeah. Hope you're happy, Bruce. I mean, what a question, Ty. Yeah, just it wasn't teeing up the Giants to get destroyed. Well, I mean, it's it a great question. Aaron's <laughs> not going to do that, but it is an interesting little thing. Like when you go to New York, 
That is, okay, you haven't really got to experience it through a season, but you did experience it for a little bit. Media over there different than what you had been experiencing? Because remember, whenever you were heading over there, they said, this guy's not going to be able to handle yeah. the journalists in New York. No this is real media. You only got to experience it a little bit. Now you're watching kind of from outside looking in. Is it different, you think, being a part of a New York team? And what have you noticed about being a part of a New York team, even though you haven't really got to play? It's a great fan base. They're hungry, you know, for for a winning culture and for a winning team to get back to the playoffs. So they're also quick to, you know, to have some knee-jerk reactions. I think that's the NFL in general, though. It's overreaction okay. every single week. Oh, um, oh, not here. There was a Super Bowl team a few years ago, I believe, that was uh, seven and five at one point late in the year, won their last four and got into the playoffs, you know went on the road and won a couple games and won a Super Bowl. Like, and they were getting written off. So they always try and write off certain teams at certain points. It just matters if you get hot at the right time and everything comes together. But the fan base is great. I mean, I've met a lot of amazing people. They travel really, really well. Not just Fireman Ed, who was uh, in in Vegas, but there are a lot of awesome fans. Are like the one that I met in the casino at the ATM pulling out some, pulling out some money. I was like, I literally just walked around the corner and saw this guy in an eight Jersey. On. So I, I do that from time to time. You just, you know, Hey, nice Jersey. I like a Jersey and just keep walking. Most of the time I have no idea. Wait a minute. Was that? Was that, that was... Jersey. And then somebody actually, hmm. the story was somebody was actually happy? was like, Hey, do you know who that was? And I appreciate him saying that I was walking faster. Like I sped up my walk because you know, I, it wasn't intentional. I must have been walking, started striding a little bit. You know, posing, Achilles feeling pretty yeah. good. Yeah, but, yeah, posing in Vegas. But uh, Pumping our media is, our media is. You know, it's it's good. It's good media. It's you know, I think every media is tough in their own ways. I was with you know one media for eighteen years, and I don't feel like it ever got like easier. There was you know, even though there were some friendships and and you got to know everybody by name, like it didn't mean that they like started going a little bit easy on you. No, there's always tough questions and always certain people that like to stir it up a little more than others. But uh, I think that's the fun part of it. And it's the opportunity because they would love to, and not just New York media, any media would love to get you on a sound bike that's creating a little bit of, you know, a little headline. ESPN has like room for seven words on their main page, right? You know, it doesn't take much to, to get somebody to click on an article. You just got to give, give them something that can like fit in that little, uh, that little box there. So, um, uh, which AJ knows a lot about, but um, yeah, he does. Hey, oh, yeah. shout out to his eyeball, maybe. You know what I mean? Hey, what do you think about yeah, Thanksgiving? Maybe. You got any weird theories on that? I bet. Yeah, they're already cooking for it. Is that the plates we're hearing? Uh, yeah, uh, no, they're not not co- not cooking for it just yet. But uh, definitely have a turkey. Uh, okay. Learn a lot of facts about turkeys and, and how how smart they are, and some of their. Uh, the pre uh, mating rituals. The the sometimes the male will stand on top of the female for a while, and uh, just kind of a peacock a little bit, even though it's a turkey. But just kind of like in the the you know the urban uh, dictionary of uh, peacocking, uh, in a sign of dominance over the uh, over the female, but before the uh, the mating occurs. Um, Happy Thanksgiving. That have why are you mansplaining Thanksgiving yeah, what, to me? What, what is this all about? What is this all about? What are you, why are you, we're saying turkeys a little bit Toxic too masculinity. Yeah, what it is this right now? What is this all about? No, I think you know, turkeys are s- smart animals, and I would try and get as many, you know, free-range, antibiotic-free yeah. uh, turkeys as, as you can. If you're going to have turkey, some people like turkey, some people don't. Some people like, the you know, the lighter meat. Some people like the darker meat. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Um, oh, they give me that turkey yeah. leg. I want one of those turkey legs. That's what I'm looking for. Get yeah. that leg. You know what I mean? Then some ham. Oh, oh. I mean a ham. Stuffing. Oh, mm. I know you're not going to mm. have that. Huh? Yeah. I'll tell you, one of my favorite trophies I ever got was the uh, Golden uh, Gobbler Award from uh, uh, 2009 Thanksgiving game. Very proud of that. <laughs> the Golden Gobbler, huh? Jeez. Yeah. I gave, it to, I, gave it to, I gave it to AJ on his, uh, on his <laughs> birthday, though. 
Nice, right, AJ. Yeah. You're the golden gobbler now. You've been gobbling. Like got that one. Sorry, pal. It all. This guy got a gold, gold medal. And gobbled. No, let's go. Nobody's gobbled more things than AJ over there. <laughs> Congratulations, yeah. AJ. Let's go. Proud of yeah, you, buddy. Huh? Hey, he's a big chicken, super big chicken guy. guy. Drinking all day. Big chicken guy. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Just what tell is? us what it is. is. That helping your Achilles, man? What's in there? We know there's weird stuff in there. Is that the dolphins? My morning, my morning coffee drinks. There's some coffee. There's some uh, Chinese herbs. There's some. Whoa! Oh! 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 What are we putting in there? The CCP. They're in San Fran, right north, allegedly. Look out. Easy, bro. Easy. You're the one putting in your coffee. We just want to know what it is. You didn't say China. Chinese herbs have been around for thousands of years. Oh, okay. All right. We get it. Yeah. They're, the place has been around for a long time. I, <laughs> I get it. We get that. What are you putting in there? What, what are we? How are we getting better? How can I uh, cure my Achilles before it goes anywhere? There's a lot of great mushrooms as well that are not psychedelic. Those are great, too. But a lot of great mushrooms. They are. Non-psychoactive that are, that are good for you. How's that taste? Coffee tastes good? I love coffee. We got Chinese herbs, we got mushrooms, and we got coffee in there? Collagen. Oh, make oh. your skin good. That's how you look so young all the time. Yeah, I like the collagen. Any protein in there? Get jocked? You trying to get jocked up? I'm always trying to get jocked. But the protein's later, you know, after the workout, after the rehab and all that. So We saw you talk. It was probably the most jocked you've been. We're kind of pumped for you to be in the most jocked state that yeah. you've been in a long time. Are we still there? Well, you, you saw my trainer, right? He's he's pretty jocked. Triple uh, A, super jocked. Yeah. yeah he's pretty yeah. jocked. Dude, I'd do say. not get in a wrestling match with that guy. I know how it's going to end. No matter what. I don't know if you do. It's a problem. I mean, him and AJ wrestling down by the in the sand was awesome. pretty weird. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, you say weird. Sure. I mean, it certainly got to that Whatever point. Whatever wrestled awesome. AAA, yeah. for the record. I have too much respect for AAA to ever wrestle that man. <laughs> that guy's all. You still working out, though? We still feel jocked? Like, when you get back, let's say the Achilles gets back. Conditioning-wise, cardio-wise, body-wise, how long is it going to take for that to get back? I'll be fine. I'll be ready. Love that. On the way out here, Tone has a question for yeah, you. Yeah, Aaron, let's get serious and uh, talking about the collagen <laughs> and, and looking young. And also, I don't want to eat any turkey that's had any jab in it either, so I'm with you there. Amen. Um, Jeez. You, me, Whoa. Pat, we like a little wisdom, okay, in our facial hair. That's right. You're playing for a head ball coach that does not like any wisdom in his facial hair. Uh, and Coach Sala, first off, is he to grow that beard in like three hours? Does he dye it? And then also... Did you happen to get the brand of the stonewashed jeans uh, that Mark Davis was wearing uh, at midfield? Because I think it's quite a few people in this building who are, are looking to purchase a pair. Bingo. Listen, I think if you're, you know. Uh, what are you, seven feet start, tall too, by the way? Jeez Louise. Well, I, I got my, my Justin Bieber, Kanye West lifts in, you know, my. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. My, Easy. <laughs> De Niro. But let's just, let's just look at the difference. You know, you got Mark there wearing the stonewashed, the old school. Raiders, you know, billionaire owner, and you got Woody looking solid, his regular fit. You know, he's got the tennis shoes, but he's got the slacks and the coat and always the Jets hat. And I don't know if you can see it in this, but he's got his uh, his chain as well. So oh, yeah. there's different there's different levels of swag. You know, both these guys have uh, been around the game for a long time. Uh, interesting conversation. Uh, I'm sure they were having. I didn't really hear what was going on. But, uh, but yeah, those are definitely stonewashed jeans. Nice. And, uh, you know, Mark was uh, was having a nice combo there with. Uh, what are they talking Johnson. about, Johnson and Johnson? Mm -hmm. I don't think there was any conversation uh, about uh, about Johnson Johnson products or oh. uh, anything like that. But oh, tears. I know. Mark um, Davis. So tell me. Yeah. You know Baby I mean? shampoo. <laughs> Mark Davis, I've never met him. I can't wait to someday. I, you and him know each other well? Not well. Um, I feel like I know him a little bit just through Devante, and Devante likes him. Devante, you know, really enjoys uh, enjoys the conversation with him. Said they can have some really honest conversations, um, and enjoys like his presence and him being around. And obviously, he's had success. Uh, him, and his dad, uh, there for a long time, and not a ton of Super Bowls, but um, they also have a you know. There's Vegas is, is you know is coming up. You know the Vegas uh, Golden Knights won a championship. The Aces I think are back to back. Oh, champs, so right? good. Mm -hmm. The Aces are so good. Yeah. You watch this program right now, actually. Yeah. Shout out to the so Aces. I remember, Love you, Aces. I remember thinking that you know Vegas. How is Vegas going to be? Have it would have a sports team. You know when they were talking about it, but now they got not just those three, but the A's are coming. Um, and it felt like there was a lot of uh, a lot of Raider fans there at the game, which I was kind of surprised by. I thought it'd be more of a transient game where there'd be more. Uh, kind of road team fans, but um, 
as far as Robert Sala's beard, it's fantastic. Uh, he has the ability to have like, uh, just about every square inch of his face covered by a hair follicle, uh, which uh, AJ and myself and uh, probably Pat as well have never really had that uh, distinction. I did mention to him before the game, uh, just to loosen him up a little bit, that I felt like uh, his uh, color was right on Mm -hmm. as far as the black that he chose for his his facial hair (laughs) uh, to paint it in. He responded very quick to that. He was at that time, you know, his, his speaker was up here and he put that down really quick. And want to make sure everybody on the headset knew that he did not dye his facial hair at all. Okay. So huh. mm. uh, I'm here to say that uh, according to uh, Mr. Coach Sala, uh, he does not uh, put any product in his uh, beard. You um, being a menace is, on those headphones is awesome to think about. Hey, before we get started, boys, how about Coach Sala's beard today? <laughs> how about it? That's awesome to think about. Excuse me. Excuse me. We're trying to win a game here, and it's not it's, done. You know, his justification for that, uh, and I don't want to put him on blast here, was to, uh, but I will, um, was to pull up his long sleeve real quick and show me that he had a lot of arm hair that was the exact same color. <laughs> so I Valid. guess that means yeah, that's first point <laughs> checks out. I guess that proves that he didn't put anything <laughs> in his facial hair. But, uh, but yeah, he's he's gifted for sure. That thing is couple day couple day growth, yeah. I believe. Hell yeah, big dog there. He needs to just do just do it. Stash yeah. it up. Give us mm-hmm. the tuttles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give us the Hulk mm-hmm. Hogan. Yep. Let's get, is he wanting to win a Super Bowl or not? You know, that's the question. Your move. We can't thank you do enough. You, Go ahead. Do you have a – just to finish on hair, because I want to – I love this guy. I want to call him out. Do you have any – can you get some pictures of Dennis Kelly? on our? He was on our sideline. I don't know if the broadcast got him at all, but big Dennis Kelly, uh, who plays, you know, tackle for us, and we play with him in Green Bay. He has yeah. incredible long gray hair right now. See you tomorrow. All right, we just went off ESPN. Mm-hmm. That nice. was really good. Yeah. Perfect. That was perfect. Nailed it. Nailed it. That was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just absolutely. You ended your sentence right at the time, too. Perfect. That's journalism. Go. Look at you, big sports analyst on TV hitting the time. Oh, so that's why you were trying to give me the, the exit the exit music there. Yeah, well, I wasn't exit I'm gonna music. Do that. I'm going to do that every time. All right. I'm going to do that every time. Hey, it's 52. Right, well, and I'm like, wait, wait, one more thing. One more thing. It's 52 Let minutes. Let me talk about. It's 52. 52 minutes yeah. is what it is. Yeah, 52. Let me talk yep. about John Vieira's belly button hair now. You know, that's going to be next week. Hey, speaking of John, how about Sutcliffe? This guy? Uh-huh. Uh, we got hey. sent this, we got nice. sent this yeah. tequila to the office. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. Looks bottle. like a bong. Looks like a bong. It does. We got one, two or three of those. Yeah, uh, turn that thing into one. We got, it wouldn't be bad, I guess. It's it pretty easy, yeah. And then, and then, yeah. I mean, we could. Oh, with I, thought, I thought you'd be a big... I thought you'd be old school and just use an apple or something, maybe. Buddy, I mean, if we want to run through some stuff, Gatorade bottles are fantastic. Yep. Right. Water bottles, not bad. Apple's fun. Right. You're like, look at me, Johnny Appleweed. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, yeah. a, that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a fun one. <laughs> Gas mask, not bad. Sure. Bong sweet, steamroller, not bad. Cones are awesome. Pre-rolls are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Those ones that fill up all the way with the airbag. Uh, oh, yeah. volcano. volcano. There volcano. it is. Yeah, Pat, Throw those around. Bat those around. Yeah, yeah. you only eat an apple if you're feeling like a cold's coming on. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard Jim Harbaugh say that uh, <laughs> they thought he sounded sick or whatever? And he said the viruses can't penetrate me. Uh, wow. what, here's his exact quote. Jim Harbaugh's starting to win me over. Don't look now. He is batting a thousand. He's saving his best shit for wow. whenever it's getting the most loud. He's been telling stories and giving opinions. Here he is on viruses and what he does to stay healthy. Yeah, I don't... Um... I don't know what I have. Some kind of some kind of virus or something. Uh, trainer told me, but I'm not sick. Feel great. <laughs> Got a tremendous workout in today. Thank you, Coach uh, Sean Lockwood, for that. I'm uh, the iron wall that viruses bash against and, and shatter. Uh, but yeah, something's going on there. But uh, just work it out. Get it worked out. Work it out of the system. Do some more push-ups. Keep talking. Eat an apple. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> I think he said he was immunized right afterward yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> from that entire thing. That wasn't where he stopped, Aaron. I don't know if you – we're not going to get into it all. Yeah. all right, I'm not, it's not time to just show you Jim Harbaugh videos. This guy's batting 1,000 mm-hmm. last 24 hours in front of a microphone. He told a story about his pet chickens yep. mm-hmm. and how he used to judge chickens. He told a story about being on Judge Judy and preparing for his court on Friday. This guy is awesome right now, Aaron. 
Nervous birds, right? Don't eat the chickens. Yeah. That's what you used to say. Yeah. He's come around, yeah, though. Not anymore. He's Full come system. around. Yeah, persistent. Do you want to watch the video or not? Do you want to watch the video or not? You got a lot going on in your life. It's about a minute long. Come on. Put it on. Let's go. It's needed. <laughs> the, this is... Here's Jim Harbaugh talking about chickens yeah. and what he used yeah. to think first now. Yeah. Uh, Easter. Went to the tractor supply. And uh, as, as before, I think they even shut things down. But with the uh, tractor supply, I got my got the chickens, brought them home for Easter. And... Uh, just little chicks, you know, your kids. And uh, they love them. You know, they, they love those chickens for you know, about a week. <laughs> the chicks. And then the chicks became teenager chickens and then um, became adult chickens, all, uh, all hens, egg layers. Um, yeah, I'm the one who takes care of them. Um, and the respect that I have for chickens. I know there, was, there was a time when I said, that chicken is a nervous bird. I don't eat chicken. I don't eat meat, you know. But uh, but I was dead wrong. I I stand corrected. Uh, these chickens are low maintenance and high production. <laughs> they lay they lay an egg every 26, 27 hours, and uh, they, just, they need water. They need food, and uh, then I play with them too. I let them out in the yard. We run around. They're happy to see me. They're happy to see me. There's, there's times when I'm doing good things for other people, and they don't, they're not as happy to see me as my chickens are. So uh, it's good. It's good for my mental health as well. And uh, get fresh eggs every day. On the left, John. Oh, yeah. Highly productive. <laughs> this guy's doing stand-up bits in the middle of this whole investigation of him being suspended for the rest of the season. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I like the fact that I just learned a lot about chickens. Not nervous bird. Actually, some dogs out there. Yeah. The chickens there. Yeah, but you know why, right? You know why. He has no cares in the world. He went down the road last year with multiple teams, and he's just like, now we can say, fuck it. Fuck it. What are you going to do to me? Are you going to fire me? I'm going to go get a job in the NFL and make – look. I mean, you know what they're making now in the NFL, like all these – coaches 10 million minimum a year and it's all guaranteed it doesn't matter so good for him he's reached that point where he's just like in totally zero fucks given mode <laughs> i hope he talks I on think, friday i hope he talks on friday at this court case what if he comes out on friday and goes you know what had a couple rough days with the chickens one of them you know is pecking at his eye he's got an eye patch on not good and and he's eating the you know e eating the a little leg on camera said he just had to make an executive decision. <laughs> so, <laughs> slashing those chickens. Yeah, that's where everybody thought he was heading with those chickens, by the way. Whenever he said yep. they grow, he got like kind of serious. They became teenagers and then adults. And, and, oh, and then I yeah. ate the shit out of it. And <laughs> they were delicious. These, I thought that's where he was heading. Instead, the complete opposite way, they're happy to see me. So yeah. They cluck whenever I get there. It's awesome to think because they brought up his stats yesterday. Schefter brought up his stats. It's like, I think it was Shefty. He was like, uh, you guys text each other yet? You and Shefty? I haven't heard from him yet. Okay. Damn. Well, you lost your number. You'd have to text him. True. He's got it, and he'll text me, and I'll probably text him back. But Look at this. Which is, more than, which is more than some people get, so you know, he's got to feel good about that. But, I mean, I'd look, I did wow. text him like, hey, lose my number. <laughs> you responded is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That's nice. a big deal. Yeah, some people don't get, it. Don't, don't, don't get a response sometimes. Yeah, some people aren't even told to fuck off. That's awesome. Yeah, true. <laughs> You know what I mean? Shefty, get back in that batter's box. Hey, and shout out, Shefty. Shout out. Come on, Shefty. What do you say? Text Take him. another swing. Text Break him. Take another story. He was talking, I believe, about Harbaugh's win record in the NFL. 70%. It was, like, very good. Like, he he had his time, obviously, went to the Super Bowl, big story, and then he goes to Michigan. It's like, I wonder what the future looks like for Harbaugh in Michigan. If he leaves, too, it's like... This Michigan football team has been built up, man. They are so fucking good. They are so good yeah. right now. What becomes next, you never know. What's on the other side of the door, you have no clue. That'd be fascinating, Aaron. They just like every conversation we have with you, pal. When's the book club starting back up? I think we should maybe do next week. And let me just finish with, can I finish with one thing about, about coaches? Just a, just a thought of the day. Oh, thought of the days. New seg. Wow. New seg, new seg. Thought of the day. Love that. Normally a lot of them. This one is the one. This is the thought du jour, ladies and gentlemen, from Aaron Rodgers. I think it's easier to be a great coach in college than in the NFL. And I think people like Nick Saban bear that out. Nick is one of the greatest coaches of all time, right, in college. Because in the NFL, 
great players make great coaches. In college, great coaches can make great players. It's, it's flipped. Now, there's obviously great players in college, but you need great coaches because you see every single year there's certain coaches that get replaced, and a guy like a Jim Harbaugh comes in or a guy who's really schematically has his shit together comes in and can turn the place around quickly with the same players. NFL, you need great quarterback play and, and, and great players. And when you have that, then you have great coaches. And it's, it's the inverse in college. I can promise that. There's very few guys like Jim who's been able to be, uh, you know, be great in college and, and great in the pros because usually it's great coaches go to programs, make them, make them better. NFL, you gotta have quarterbacks. You gotta have quarterbacks and you gotta have, you gotta have, you know, elite talent. And that's what makes great coaches. And there's good coaches who can make players better. But for the most part, look at every great coach. They probably had a great quarterback. That was a great thought du jour. I'm happy we did that segment. I think you're 100% accurate, too. And Doug Peterson even alluded to it whenever he said the reason why he took the Jacksonville job is because of quarterback. Like, a lot of these coaches who have a chance to maybe go to other places, they're like, we all understand we need a quarterback. I think Pete Carroll, another guy, right? I mean, Pete Carroll's another guy who at first, whenever he was in the NFL, didn't have success. Then he goes to college, builds up a program there. Now he's up in Seattle. Obviously, we're seeing him have success. Not easy. you got to deal with uh, adults, too, bro. You know what I mean? Well, Pete, Pete Carroll, you know, was he worried at USC when they were coming after him? No, he already had the biggest contract lined up in the history of the NFL for a coach. He went off to Seattle, made his money, left that place, you know, <laughs> under, under, you know, sanctions, bowl, you know, bowl sanctions and issues. No big deal. He's making, at the time, I think $7 million, $8 million a year. And they'd look at and Jim Harbaugh, you know, I think he might have been at Stanford at the time. He saw that going on. He's like, oh, you can do that? Sweet. <laughs> now, there were, earlier in the year, there was reports that, well, a couple weeks ago, I guess, there was reports that the NFL is not just going to hand a golden parachute to Jim Harbaugh yeah, with no what way. has happened in Michigan. I'm like, whoever's reporting that needs to never report anything ever again. We need to find out who said that. Who, who is the person that said that, that thinks that some billionaire who wants to win in the NFL is going to be like, you know what, you, Connor Stallion? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, let's, you know, let's not, let's not hire this guy just yet. Just to prove a point. The NFL, yeah. Let's not mess with our higher institutes of learning yeah. in, you know, at the lower levels. Yeah, fucking right. <laughs> yeah, the NFL. Yeah, they would do that for sure. All right, we appreciate the hell out of you. Can't wait for the book club. Good luck on continued success during this recovery. And uh, breaking news, this guy's going to be back in New York near the Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Let's, go. Wow. Let's go. That's great there news. You go. You're the man. Ladies and gentlemen, what's on your shirt? What's that say? What's that say? Just some lyrics. Just some lyrics here. And it's basically lyrics about uh, I don't about lie. knowing that uh, today's going to be, be a better day than the previous day. So. You know, I've been trying to positive stuff. You know, it's uh, shirts like this and chairs to little things hats. And and this is the same company here that uh, uh, it's called uh, Huga because it's a, it's a slight uh, spelling adjustment on a Danish concept. And the Danish concept is the idea of cherishing all the little things. I've said this on the show before. But um, I just believe in, you know, I believe in the positive mindset and, and uh uh, you know, speaking things into existence and manifestation, and um, it helps. Definitely helps. Better to think of things that way than to be bitching about what you don't have, what you wish you had, uh, what you'd rather be doing. Because uh, there's a lot of a lot of beauty all around us. And what do you always say when you uh, when you sign off on your break? Uh, be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. You know, might change your life. Why? Why is that? Might change your life. Yeah. It might. You never know. You never know what somebody's going through. You have no idea. You never know. You never know. It could be that one little thing gets him over the hump. So appreciate you guys. A Uga? Hey, Huga on three. For the people in Denmark. Uga. One, two, three. Huga. 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 Hell yeah. Appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah, Aaron. That's what I like about you. You Huga the shit out of things. Yeah. You know what I mean? What the hell just happened? I have no clue what Huga you're... is a Danish sentiment. That says cherish the little things, pal. <laughs> it's a company now that's selling. Merch. It was honestly everything. I'm all about positivity. What do you? What I always tell you? These are the good old days. Yeah, right you now. do. But you mm-hmm. just Huga. You said you can't. You know what I mean? I'm still confused on what the hell Huga is. But are they shoes? Huga is say la vie, dude. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. It's a game. Carpe too. diem. Boom. Bingo. Yeah. Boom. You get it. You're Danish. You're not Danish though. 
You know, that's I'm not Danish. You're right, but we're, it was a Danish principal, I believe he might have said. All right, let's get to a break because we got head coach of the Houston Texans joining us on the other side. <laughs> nice, right. D'Amico Ryan's. Nice. I hope he's bringing some hookah. He better. Don't he should it. be. Yeah, his hookah is good right now. Mm-hmm. Great. So hookah's their mana. Yeah. Yes. yes. All right. It's a game too, where there's cards. It's actually spelled H Y G E E, I believe. Yeah, I was gonna say. Good luck ever spelling that. Yeah, it's it's high G. No, no, Huga is what I heard. Huga. That's how you pronounce it, yeah. Wow. Sweet. That's a weird, that's a weird language. It was Very around before, were we around before, was English language around before them? The, the Danes? Because the English the English speaking time, is weird too. Yeah. The King's English, if you will. Let's get to a break. We'll yeah. talk to Miko Rhines about this. Those are Uhtreds. Perfect. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice that might change your life. Take five. Bye. 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 Everybody's got Bryce Young. Will Levis and Will Anderson uh-huh. above CJ Stroud allegedly. Lock them in. We will one million percent continue to drive that narrative uh-huh. because with what my eyes seen, AJ, and what yeah. you have seen, if CJ Stroud ends up at the Colts at number four, uh-huh. I'm happy about the future of the Colts all of a sudden. Yep. So this will be the last time we say this. CJ Stroud is the best quarterback in this draft class. That's right. For sure. We are massive fans of them. And whenever we say whatever we say over the next few months before the draft, we would like it to not be held against us because we know we are a part of the entire system here. Uh-huh. And we need C.J. Stroud and Indy. Have to but, have him. Plus, Absolutely. it's really fun to say Stroud. Yeah. Yeah, and we need him to go down to the fourth pick. <laughs> yeah, right. you think they have to trade up? Because Texans are right there at two, and, you know, those are the two quarterbacks of the future. Well, I'll tell you what, there's an opportunity and a chance for us to move, too. we got a lot of pieces to the sure, puzzle that aren't right. necessarily going to be there in the future, probably. You bundle that with the four overall pick, I think you could maybe move up to one, yeah. and then you get C.J. Stride! Hey, that ain't going to help, Miz. That ain't going to help. That's going to do nothing. He was a three-sport athlete at Plum High School where his volleyball team was in the mix for a Section 3 title. Yeah! Making his red tie debut for the win, Pat McAfee! Yeah! Aaron Rodgers! Hey, baby. AJ Hawk! Hey, baby, AJ. Hawk! Shell sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pick. Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November fourteenth. 2023, hour three of this program starts now. Football is happening. The man to my left, your right, is AJ Hawk. His son actually drove his thumb, allegedly, his 
Allegedly. Mm -hmm. His son, son drove his thumb through his right eyeball. He lost one-third of his cornea. That's why he's wearing sunglasses. He's also the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, AJ. Hey, Hawk. Hey, 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 hey. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Darn. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. Nine-year NFL vet and played every position in the secondary. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Butler is here. Hey, hey, Joining hey, us now is a man who was a two-time pro bowler when he was in the NFL flying around the football field. Now... He's just the head coach of the Houston Texans, a team that this past weekend went into Cincinnati and got a massive win on a walk-off field goal. Ladies and gentlemen, Alabama legend, D'Amico Ryan. Yeah. How are you, coach? Doing great, man. How you guys doing? Man, I'll tell you what. Not as great as a rookie head coach who has C.J. Stroud as their quarterback. Huh? Hey, this got to be great. This got to be good to have C.J. Stroud playing the way he's playing. How has that affected, obviously, your rookie head coach season. And did you or could you have ever expected C.J. to be able to do what he's doing right now, Coach? Yeah, C.J. is doing an outstanding job, as everyone's seen. Uh, the most important thing is how he's, you know, won the locker room and the way the guys behind him, right, the way they fight for him, they want to play for him. He's ex exuded that confidence, and I think his confidence has rubbed off on our entire team. Right. And that's what you have to have at that quarterback position, a guy that everybody in the organization, a guy that everybody in that locker room believes in. And that's what CJ has been proven over the past you know, couple of weeks, that he's a guy that you can believe in. Go ahead, AJ. Did you guys, uh, I, I assume you guys were in on that early. You knew his leadership abilities and, and what he was able to do and get the team behind him. But that wasn't always like the narrative from the public. And we know like there's all kind of disinformation always thrown out there. But is he just reinforcing, I guess, what you guys kind of knew when you drafted him? For sure. As we go through the process, right, we, we take a thorough process, thorough look. So it's talking through, talking to all his, his coaches, right, people that have been with him. And the most important thing for me is throughout the combine process is talking through all, to all of his teammates. And you hear, you know, how much they respected CJ, how much love they have for CJ. You hear the great things that CJ did as a leader, for his offensive line and for the, all the guys that were around him, that's what really stood out to me throughout that process. And you know that he was, no, without a doubt, that's a great leader. How, let's talk about some of these weapons that CJ has that maybe we didn't know about. Noel Braun, Nico, obviously Tank Dell's doing mm -hmm. his thing. And I know I don't. you're obviously head coach now, so you're everywhere, known to be a defensive genius whenever you're D.C. with the Niners. But when you think about this offense with a bunch of players that the national – we didn't really know who the hell they were. They've exploded here, and they don't blink, coach. Hey, N Nico wasn't playing, but Joe Burrow and the boys march right down the field. You're in Cincinnati. It's almost like these dudes don't know what they don't know, or are they just the right type of guy? Because there was never a doubt from any of them, it felt like, on Sunday. And that has happened numerous times through this season thus far for you. Yeah, they're just the right type of men, I think, and, and how we work. It doesn't matter, right, who gets to shine. Everybody just wants to win. So whenever your number is called, all our guys are ready. They're prepared for the moment. Nobody is, nobody is stressing in the moment. But when they get the opportunity, right, CJ is delivering the ball. No matter who's open, they know they can get an op. And Noah has shown up. I mean, he's had a career day versus the Bucks, and he comes back and he has another career day, right, versus the Bengals. Noah has shown up. He's been consistent since day one for us. Uh, Tank showing up, being an explosive playmaker. Nico, right, he's been explosive. So all those guys, they've been they've been working this way. Right in in the dark where nobody else has been watching them. I've been seeing it since OTAs. How consistent our wide receiver room has been, and not only in the passing game. What sets our guys apart is their willingness to get in there and get the nose bloody when in the running game. And that's what I love most about our receivers. You're talking about. I mean, what a crew! It'd be great to have. Hate that you're in the AFC South. I mean, <laughs> tough. <laughs> tough. Absolutely hate it. But you talk about seeing those guys working behind closed doors door since OTAs. Let's talk about you. Obviously, rookie quarterback. Quarterback is having an incredible job. People forget rookie head coach. Been a player, been a coordinator. Now your head coach, 10 weeks into the regular season. Comfortable figuring it out schedule-wise, everything that kind of all the bullshit that comes across your desk <laughs> now. Like, is that a thing? Like, has it what has it been like being a head coach here? Now, granted, it's better when you're winning, I would assume, but your team has yeah. done fantastic. You're seemingly handling it with ease. What has it been like to be a head coach now? Yeah, a lot better when you're winning for sure. So that, that part has been good. But all of the, everything is kind of 
we just hitting our stride. I think, you know, I'm more comfortable in the role. I think just all collaboratively, collaboratively, everyone around me has just helped out. We've we've all worked well together. Coaching staff has done an unbelievable job of getting their players ready to go each and every week. So I'm just really thankful for my staff and the work that they put in. They deserve all the credit because they've done an unbelievable job. How do you feel, uh, like, obviously you were a coordinator, so you've coached before, but, like, we're seeing Antonio Pierce right now really – the locker room loves him immediately. And I think being a former player, your resume, especially you, two-time Pro Bowl or Antonio Pierce, Super Bowl champion legend, it's like your resume is already figured out, so guys just like are naturally going to follow you. What is your coaching style, and do you believe that because you're a former player, it has helped you immensely in this role that you have now? Yeah, with my style, man, I want to be energetic. I want guys to understand, man, football is supposed to be fun. It's not going to be something you dread. It's hard enough, right? The game that we play is hard enough. So I want guys to, first off, be themselves, right? They can relax. They can be themselves and have fun playing the game. And that's what I wanted to, you know, showcase the most for me being a former player, understanding how hard it is. Like, you can have fun, man, playing ball. And it's even more fun when you win. But I really want guys showcasing their personalities, don't want anybody walking on eggshells when they're in the locker room. I want guys having fun, I want guys clowning around, having fun with each other. Then when it comes time to being on the field, doing your job, being where you're supposed to be, man, be accountable, do what you're supposed to do, but have fun doing it. Got to have the right people to have that culture. Feels like you guys found it quickly. Congrats to you. We're loving watching it all. Darius has a question for you, D'Amico. Yeah, sure. Coach, so uh, obviously you've been a coordinator before you got the head coaching gig, and it's been some conversation about uh, around the league about some different coordinators going to the sidelines as opposed to being in the press box offensively and defensively. What are some of the pros and cons of either call you talked about energy. Obviously, you can, I feel like you can feel that a little more on the sideline. But what are some of the pros and cons of calling it from the box and, and on the sideline as a play caller? And for me, just being a former player, always being on the sideline, there's just a, a unmatched energy that you feel on the sideline and being able to communicate with your players instantly, right when they come off the field. If something happened, good or bad, I can congratulate my guys. I can you know, praise them. I can celebrate with them. If something negative happened, I can correct them right in that moment. So I don't have to have them getting on the phone or getting on the, the headsets. I can correct them right in that moment and I can praise them in that moment. I think for guys who've been in the booth, I think it's just, it's a calming uh, atmosphere for play callers, right? It's, it's not chaotic up there. They can really lock in and focus mm -hmm. on the play calls. But for me, uh, you know, I'm a man of, I, I'm, I'm a player at heart, so yeah. I need to feel that energy. I want to be down there with my guys, and I want to give them the, all the energy I have as well. Just as a complete dipshit in this whole football world, I didn't even start thinking about it until the Matt Canada move in Pittsburgh. It's like all the things you lose out on being up in that booth. Like, how about just looking in a guy's eyes and be like, oh, this dude, hey, feels like this guy today is a different dude than he was maybe during the week. It's like that type of energy and vibe you can't get anywhere else. How have you enjoyed the sideline? You got a lot more say down there now. You know what I mean? <laughs> coach. <laughs> oh, I've <laughs> no, I've enjoyed it, man. And you you hit it on the head right there. If a guy is in a funk, like, man, you can say those words. You see it instantly. So you can say, you know, some encouraging things to him and snap him back, right? So he can go out and have a better series the next time out. But those are the things that I, I truly enjoy. Right. And I, I enjoy most like when guys make plays, man, I want to be there to celebrate my players because I know how hard it is to make plays in this league. Yeah, it's a big deal, too, when the head coach is out there celebrating. Ty has a question for you. <laughs> yeah, coach. Everyone always talks about Taysom Hill kind of being the, you know, Swiss Army, the best Swiss Army knife in the NFL. He can do so many things. But you guys have Dare Ogumbawale, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Yep, nailed it. Uh, we saw him a couple weeks ago having to fill in <laughs> when Fairbairn went down couple touchbacks, uh, made a field goal. Just curious, what was his max distance that you guys were comfortable <laughs> with him kicking? And then also we saw this last week him having a massive hit on kickoff. Is, has that been something you guys have known about him the entire time you've had him? Like that, this guy can basically go out there and, and do anything that we ask him to do on the football field. And do you think there's anyone else like him in the NFL? Yeah, Dare, man, he's been very reliable, but we you knew that during our, throughout training camp, right? Practice some kicks with him in training camp, so you always have those guys. You try to see who 
can be an emergency kicker for you. So Dare is one of those guys with his soccer background. He stepped in and did a really nice job for us. I think his max range was right where we kicked it. That was his <laughs> match. Max. <laughs> it was right, right, right on time right there. Then, well, like you said, Dare does a great job in his special teams role. He stepped up uh, last week, man, two big hits on kickoff team. He does a great, outstanding job protecting on the punt team. But it's those guys right in the league, those guys who take that special team role and they take it serious and they're the true captains of your special teams unit, those guys matter. And Dare, he's been outstanding for us. Coach, you fair catching kickoffs? If we have to, we will. Come on! Oh, <laughs> Go, coach. Coach! Coach! Uh, Coach, we can't do it. We can't. We can't. Even if it benefits your team, you can't. You get the ball to twenty-five with CJ Stroud. I get it. Okay, and all those weapons you do. But if if you let this happen, Coach, I know it's your first year. What are they going to take next? Exactly. What are they going to take next? We can't let that happen to the game. Yeah. You know, we got to keep it. We got to keep it a physical game. You agree with that? Or like the special teams of it. How do we kind of? Oh, they had a fullback take one back this year too, right? Yeah, yeah. down the side. Yeah. We, yeah. When we when we get an opportunity now, we'll make we'll make you pay if we get an opportunity. We'll just release our secret weapon there, Andrew Beck. We want to make something happen on the kickoff return team. Special teams is wild right now. I appreciate the fact that you guys have great specialists. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you have a young core that seems to be very mature. And uh, we're loving watching your rookie season as a head coach down there in Houston. Before we let you go, obviously we have to ask you about the elephant in Houston Texans right now organization. Denzel Perriman has been suspended three games for hits that have occurred during football games. The last one was against Jamar Chase. I guess there's been a couple others in the past. You guys are... He's going away from the team for three weeks now. Not allowed to be in the building, I believe, because of a suspension. What will you say to him before this? And what, how does that conversation go if you've already had it? Yeah, I've spoken with Denzel. Tough conversation, and he knows it, man. We hate to lose right? a good player for us, a starting linebacker for us. And we'll just let the process play out. Uh, it's just, you know, it's hard. But we have hard news to hear, but we'll have our young guys all right, stepping up, ready to go. I think he's losing like $380,000 in yeah, game yeah. checks. I mean, it's it's a big deal, but obviously the NFL put in their suspension this morning. We can't wait to see how you guys maneuver around it, navigate an incredible season that can still be had. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach D'Amico Ryan. Yeah, Coach. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, morning of him coming on show. That happens. He handled that very well, though. He yeah. did. Let the process handle out. Yeah, it's disappointing, obviously. That's uh, two now. Two defenders suspended yeah. now with multiple games. Kareem Jackson, four, got taken down to two. Now this is three. I would assume it would probably be knocked down to one or two. But uh, This is the most recent hit against Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase was going to, like, slide. He's not a quarterback, though. He's a wide receiver. It was a little bit of a late decision as well. Yeah. Boom! Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's a big – I mean, he, he brings the hammer it, when it, he hits. It me. looks nastier. It looks nastier than it was because he's going down and his head slams back. Yeah, yeah but he – you know, that whole... It's crowd, not head-to-head, -head, technically. Yeah, but you see the way he puts his head directly down. The What the NFL is going to say is, yeah, he lowered his level very late. And he's not a quarterback. He's a wide receiver, so you don't expect a slide, potentially, whenever there's somebody right in front of you. It is football. you got to make your hit. But you see the crown of his helmet going down on that particular angle here. There's another play that we have from one of his earlier hits where he just literally lowers his head and he's just running straight, like, old-school... I mean, he's Ooh. just, he's literally just running hmm. just like this yeah. in for that tackle there. So I'd assume the NFL was saying, like, hey, can't have you doing this yeah. anymore. For yourself, too, those are the types yeah. of hits that, yep. you know what I mean? Those are the ones. Those are the scary ones. I think I've said on here, yeah, there's like compression fracture or whatever, spiral fracture that, that can, yeah, do some damage. So I would assume that's why the suspension happened for him. Uh, obviously, those are devastating blows, and Jamar Chase took a hard one, that guy took a hard one. But I think this is potentially the NFL saying, hey, Bub. People yeah. don't tackle the way you tackle anymore yeah. because we've learned that the way you tackle is terrible for your well-being. That's going to be tough for him to change. But also, I think uh, there's like seven of these shots that have been happened over the last couple of years that the NFL is probably fed up with it. But also, hopefully, this could potentially save Denzel, who's a good football yeah. player. Absolutely. Great football oh, yeah. player. Great yeah. football player. Absolutely. We had uh, Hitman on Harrison Smith talk about how, you know, you just got to change. What year is this for him? Like eight, nine? nine? nine. Yeah, he's been around for a while. And he's probably Pro Bowler 2021 with the Raiders, I believe. Yeah, yeah. stud. Yeah, so he, he, he brings it, but he's going to have to change it a little bit. And like you said, that 
especially that last one. Like that's more of like he's just running like protection for crazy. the offensive player and almost you know probably more so for yourself as a defender. Back in the day, you find a guy that does that. It's like oh, here's our wedge buster. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it was like yeah, not a lot of dudes will do that. <laughs> that's great news. And then we like learned about like the reason why people are probably scared to do that is because it's incredibly dangerous mm -hmm. to yourself. Now, just like AJ says. My jaw is constructed a little different. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't get concussions. The muscle. And I do jaws are size. Right. Denzel Perriman probably believes that he is built different than mm -hmm. most people. That's why he's able to do That's why he hits so hard. Yeah. And it's almost like the NFL is probably trying to be like, yeah, we, hey, bub, need you to change a little bit. I, at this stage, nine years in, I mean, three hundred some thousand dollars out of your pocket's a big deal. Tom. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. He's gonna have. That'll to make you think. Of, that'll make you think about it. This is the one. Like the head down one is more. It's more to protect yourself, the tackler, not the person you're trying to hit. I feel like the the when you hit him with like the crown of your your forehead, head to head, that's more to protect the person you're hitting. But this one's like, hey, don't put your head down because that's how people get paralyzed. We understand it's yeah. it's tough, but yeah, I mean. He's going to have to think about it now. Show that okay. second video. Show that second video again. I mean, he's like a four-yard run-up with his head directly down. It's like this is everything that the NFL was trying to stop there for like, Ooh, you know what I mean? I mean, that's yeah, just like. Yeah. He still had it you know, after. Guy's tough. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough as nails. Back in the day, though, that's how football was taught. Oh, yeah. So it's like it is a very, we're not saying that this doesn't suck for Perriman, and it's like that's a damn shame, but that's like. Very much what the NFL is like, nah, we ain't doing that anymore. They're, they made a lot of rules for that because of lawsuits and potential future lawsuits and health and money mostly. But, like, that is basically what they are talking about in this entire thing. Yeah, I mean, you've talked about it before, too. Like, this guy's a nine-year vet. When he was growing up, that is not what he learned. So the people who are in the league now absolutely have been, you know, taught how to tackle. But Denzel Perriman was taught one way, and that's exactly what it was. Yes. And for everybody. You got jacked up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was the segment. Yeah. A lot of these. A lot, lot of these. Well, yeah. technically, no one, no decent coach is teaching you to put your head down. They're telling you to put your head in there, but not to put your head down. Yeah. Just, we're not doing any of that anymore. It happens, though. No, it does No, we're not I'm doing not that saying... anymore. You're, a co you're potentially a coach in Ohio. We need to make sure. Up, out of the way. That's right. Not Up shoulder. and out. Well, you, you'll probably injure yourself doing it if you try to do that. And I think, no, I'm just saying, they you don't, want, say don't want your head. <laughs> no one wants your head down. Head up, up, up and out. Your face mask. I've taken all the courses. Yeah. I've taken all the online courses on how to tackle now. Yeah. It, that's it, right? Up and out. Do you respect it? Or? Sure. Is that what the courses are telling you? Yeah, I'm always deciphering. We all interpret things differently. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. He looks cool. You look super cool with those glasses. Yeah. This thing comes and goes. It run, starts running and burning, and then it stops for a little bit. And it starts running and burning. It's all right. Oh, yeah. And when you, today, because you don't have any patch at all, when you smoke your cigar, it's just going directly into that eye that has become a little bit of a lazy eye right now, right? No, it hasn't really. That that doesn't really honestly affect it. It was going right in my eye. Yeah, that would. But just now, if I try to move my eyeball at all, that's when it's Ooh. it's like gravel up there. When I try to mm. turn my eyes left or right, so I'm just staring, I'm just staring at Aaron <laughs> almost falling asleep in these glasses, trying not to move my eyeball. <laughs> just straight ahead. Mm -hmm. You know how much you move your eyeball? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Even when you close your eyes, it goes up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like never ending. You smoke weed. That's what I just heard. You pothead. Yeah. Because I asked how much you smoke. I yeah. Because there's been numerous times where I've potentially been on cloud 40, and I'm like, geez, eyes are doing a lot. Like, even when I close <laughs> my eyes, <laughs> it, it, also it goes up, that. and then it goes down, and then it's always moved. Do they ever get a break? You know, like, when I sleep, I'm getting a break, but do my eyes ever? Oh, no. always going. Yeah. Not oh, no. Rem. Can we get another view of that uh, of that eyeball here, hour, yeah. th hour two and a half in? It's not running right now, so it's actually good. I got it. It's coming back. No, it's We're watching better. this thing come back. It's growing it stronger. It's not that red right now. Oh, that had to uh, I'm gonna, that uh, one hurt. Again, yeah. That one hurts so yeah, I can't bad. blank, obviously. It'll be 100% by Friday. Look at oh, you. yeah, Friday. Kind of look like the rock with the eyebrow. A little bit. You know what I mean? When it went down know. and went up. Ohio's rock. You look so cool Gosh. with those glasses. How come, I mean. How, how come Aaron was attacking you today? Yeah, it did feel was like he? you two had a little yeah. animosity. It brought up well, your wife. I mean, come on. He like this. Like he said, didn't he say low hanging fruit? Okay, like get some new material. I saw where he was going the whole time. Like, we get it. Cool. You make sex jokes. <laughs> That's what we're talking about, though. You guys, you still have a little animosity. You, you get it from Bob. No, that. no. I just, I thought we, I, th I just expect some better material. He kind of brings the same thing. Whenever he gets a little spicy, he brings the same kind of stuff when he's in a goo. He's, you know, he's bopping around. Like when he hits a good golf shot and he's walking, he's bouncing down the fairway compared to when he's playing terrible and he's. 300 yards in front of the whole group, pouting. Yeah, what's this all about? 
feels like there's it feels like there's a little yeah, animosity. Something's happening here. Yeah, They're what's falling on? out. Oh, no animosity whatsoever. I'm just you know. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm just observing things. I'll tell you what. He is a very good golfer. Yeah, he can hit the very shit good. out of a ball. Why, why is he so good at golf? Actually, that doesn't quarterback. make. Because quarter, yeah, but like yeah. a lot of quarterbacks aren't like he's a fucking golfer. Like, and and he expects himself to be a golfer. That's the thing on top of it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he doesn't him. play nearly as much as like a lot of those golfers that are up in that top five, top ten. Do he? That's what I'm saying. This motherfucker just got back from Hungary, and then he, yeah. he how long were you there? Uh, four years. I don't. Know. Yeah. That's what it potentially felt. Well, I tried this one thing, and it was uh, I was there for actually six months, but it was just five days or whatever. <laughs> like, okay, dude, these other people were at a country club practicing their putts, <laughs> stretching out, and then he. He goes and plays against him. He's beating. I'm like, you ever think about like, like trying at this? You, you could potentially be. No, those guys are way too good. And he's what? He's fucking top five this yeah. year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cost us what? Seventy five grand? Is that what? Yep. It was? yep. Bingo. Yep. Jesus Christ. He's a, he's an alien. He might be one of them. There's a chance. How about Dan Rolovsky said no chance of aliens, but is you ever met Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Con Man had multiple co- good comebacks on that one. Good. Well, the religion one really started us in a whole nother combo. Yeah. That, I didn't yeah, that, was on, that one's on me. Hand up. You just couldn't let it slide. Hand up. I could not let that one go. It's could not get through it? No, 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 no. Had no. to let it out? No chance. Hey, James Madison on Friday. We pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah. Jacked yeah. up. I've gotten to the point where I'm pumped. I looked at the videos. No offense, James Madison. I'm very pumped <laughs> to get there. But I looked at the... The 10 verse 5 is happening. Yeah, that's yeah. the only thing. Just like, uh, that's... Who's so, that? Oregon State, Washington. Mm-hmm. I just want to, for people that don't know. Oh. Okay. Not you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> that's happening in what city? Corvallis. There we go. Well there, we go. there we go. I mean, you are absolutely on it. But, yeah. like, that whole thing. James Madison, I've started looking into it. Like, obviously, they're in the middle of a just bullshit rule yeah. with the NCAA. Like, no reason for them to be getting punished the way that they're getting punished, except for an archaic rule that just can be changed and allegedly potentially being petitioned right now. So we shall see if the NCAA, just like the Tez Walker, North Carolina stuff, could have happened like six weeks beforehand. Yeah. NCAA would have been put in good light. This one seems like everybody's in agreement, like... Hey, don't have to enforce a two-year transition period for a school to become officially D1, especially if in the first year, instead of the normal move, which is like still have a D2 schedule, but you're transitioning into D1. Then that next year, you have a full D1 schedule, and then you're allowed to get into championships and bowl games and everything like that. They took a D1 schedule their first year in their transition. So they tried to expedite that whole thing. Then they petitioned like, hey, we didn't have that transition year. We want straight into D1, D1 schedule. Is there any way we could change? Yeah, and the NCAA allegedly looking into it for James Madison, who's currently undefeated, not allowed to play in the Sun Belt Championship. Makes no sense. Wow. So dumb. At all. Makes no sense. Played people, beat people, earned right to go there, but because of some NCAA bylaw, whatever. It's stupid. But then I started looking in their fan base. I started looking at their game day. Yeah. I started looking at the last time college game day was there. It was like, all right, this is going to be sweet. Loud. Anytime you get a chance to go to a place that you don't get to go often, like game day, I feel like their fans bring it. I'm pumped to get there on Friday. Harrisonburgville yeah. is going to be sweet. That's not the name. It's Harrisonburg. Harris. Harrisburg. No, Looks Harrisburg's like in part, Pitt, uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, PA. That's it's Harrisonburg. 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 The capital. What did Diggs say? Harrisonburgville. Yeah, he was trying to cover all the bases. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think it's what he was doing halfway through there. It's Harrisonburg. It is awesome. Just like that uh, town in Iowa where Deeds is from. Winchester. Winchester. And Fieldville. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Deep pool. Mr. Deeds. Yeah. Good find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out to you for doing that for Mm -hmm. him. Thank you. But also, yeah, can't wait to get there on Friday. She'll be a blast. The whole show will be here. Yeah. Jacked up. I mean, you know, just any of these ones that are kind of different than your traditional game day feel, they're fun. They are. Yeah. And good energy. Yeah. Can't wait to see what I learn about town Friday for Saturday's college game day. And mm-hmm. they're going to be excited because, I mean, maybe they thought they would, but like going into the season, you're not expecting, like, oh, hey, game day is probably going to be coming this year. You game know, day, like, I love and respect the shit out of college football. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I do. All I, levels. I, res- I, I do. I love and respect it. A lot more now, obviously than before I got a chance to experience it all in there. College game day coming to town, and I'm very lucky to be on the show. Very, very lucky to be on the show. Kirk's been on there for 28 years. 28 years. Don't, don't you forget it. And 28 years ago, it wasn't what it is now, but it has grown into like, hey, here we go. It's like a game pretty much, like a, a, 
a, a national game is coming to your to your campus, your people show up yeah. for game day. Yes. And they are so yeah. incredibly hospitable mm -hmm. and so nice. And they want to put on for their school and for their alumni and for everybody in their thoughts. And it's also a commercial for your school. Like, this is about to be a James Madison commercial, pretty yeah. much. A lot of people who don't know a lot about James Madison are about to learn a lot about James Madison through College Game Day on mm -hmm. Saturday. It's an honor to be a part of something like that. You know, like, I, I have some friends that went to James Madison. They're very proud to be Dukes. Very much so. Very, very proud to be Dukes. And they've talked a lot of shit about how awesome that place is. And now we're, the whole world is going to get a chance to see it on Saturday, pretty much. Yeah, and they So are, I'm pumped to be a part of that. Yeah. Lucky to be a part of that. Excited to get down there. The school is thriving as a whole. We talked about last week the upset their soccer team had. And then I believe their basketball team is now ranked because of they beat Michigan State. And then they've won oh, a few yeah. times. Th after that, that Michigan State? That one. Right? Is oh, those? Yeah. Oh, is, is oh the Ooh. coach? And then obviously the football program being what? 9-0? 10-0? 10-0. 10-0. Big deal. It's going to be sweet. App State coming in. Yeah. They, that, they have heartbreak and all was, over their resume for other people. And that was a little do. place, a uh, little town you went to last year. So it was, you know, it's full circle. Yeah, it was. App State was nice. Um, Boone, North Carolina. That's yeah. right. Up there in the mountains. I think we're going up into the hills here for uh, James Madison I'm as well. Sure it's a in the middle of nowhere. Feels like we're up. At, in a good way. In a good way, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful countryside. Yeah, nothing but football and booze. They announced the uh, celebrity education, picker yet? Huh? Of course. <laughs> announced the picker yet? I do not think so. Oh. I think I know who it is. It's yep. not James Madison, tell you I, that much. He's dead. Can you give us a hint? Among other things. I, I, is, I, it a, I, is it a music group? No, uh, Joe Burrow will Bros be there. Joe Burrow will be there. Yeah. Did they go to James Woo! Madison? Joe, they did not. Somebody said that yesterday. I do not think they went to James Madison. <laughs> that was me. I apologize. <laughs> I believe they have. Uh, I believe they have a, a new song out that they're going to play. Oh, oh hell and yeah! And it's good. Okay, I oh, heard obviously. This. Yes. It's obviously. a good what do you song. Mean, where, Burning up. Where are they playing? It? Huh? Where are they playing the new song? J James Madison Game Day Saturday. Oh, they're going to be the guest pickers? No. Jesus Christ. Can you open they're, up your ears? Please. I'm trying. So the Joe Bros are no going to be there. It's a tough show. Joe Bros are going to be there, but they're not part of game day? No, they are. They, Jesus they bring their own game Christ. day. Christ. I mean, let them, let them be the guest pick, picker. What do are we Do you remember when Dan and Thank Shay you. performed at game day? I do, but I missed them. I just saw them going for rehearsal. <laughs> when I taste beer. So they're performing on game day. Yeah. Boom! Wow. At James Madison. Joe Bros. I saw a lot of people saying, Joe Bros? It's like, watch the doc. Joe Bros are bros. Oh, yeah. yeah. The best. Watch Joe Bros. Tone, too. <laughs> Joe Bros. Joe Bros are dogs out there. Yeah. Is one of them still on uh, The Voice? I don't think I don't so. I saw, I saw the one. I saw them on Songland. It was great. That's, yep. when, I, that's when I... Developed massive respect because the young one who sings it said something along the lines of like, uh, we need more songs, mostly because I'm sick of singing songs from about when I was 12 years old. <laughs> He's like, I don't really relate to these songs anymore. Makes sense. So I'd like to get new songs. He was like, oh, and then you watch the documentary and it's like, they very much understand that they were a kid act. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and then like trying to evolve and change has been a constant thing for them. I'm pumped to see them perform on Saturday. God, Joe Bro's concert on Saturday we're going to. <laughs> be sick. That's but, sweet. The other brother, too. Yeah. The fourth brother is uh, part of that show on ABC, like celebrity relatives, and you have to guess the other person's uh, who they're related oh, to. Of course. Yeah, that's yeah. The, it sounds sweet. The fourth Joe bro. Of course. What? I knew that. Yes. Sounds like I'm missing something here. There's that show on ABC. No, no, you're not missing anything. I was I was just thinking about the Joe like bro. Frankie, is it? Yeah, I was just thinking about the Jonas Brothers, and that was the last thing I think I saw about that. The one show. on the right is the one. Is yeah, the Jonas. Yeah, the guy on the right is in that show, and then I forget. He made a bad decision at one point in his life. He said, "I don't want to do it." Yeah, probably. Yeah, didn't want to play the bass or something. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it's like I think he's just younger. Yeah, well, one of them's going through a pretty pretty rough time now as well with the divorce, which isn't that's great. good. Get the Man, music. I feel out. bad about that. I Me saw too. To Sansa? It's real. Yes. So, yeah, Sansa Stock from Game of Thrones, <laughs> the, the actress and that. She was, like, talking a bunch of junk about him on a ring cam, and he found oh. out and heard it. Oh. These ring cams. Dude, they'll get you. Yeah. everything. And get hacked, too. <gasps> what? Oh, yeah. Excuse oh, yeah. me? Listen, speak. thank you for the transition. Yep. We've been playing a lot of Jim Harbaugh's clips over the last 24 <laughs> hours because they are awesome. Yeah. They are amazing. Jim Harbaugh's winning me over just on the mic right now. Mm -hmm. His promos right now. Top of the, top of the business. Yeah. It, top of the telling stories about chickens and everything else. I've I got a virus, but I'm not sick. Okay, I have a steel wall, an iron wall. Yeah, mm -hmm. he is the iron. Viruses wall. bash off like everything he's spent right now. 
hitting, you know, and he said Michigan's going to be America's team and because America likes teams that have to battle through adversity and consequent, blah, 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 everything like that. And I don't know if anybody's ever going to get on board with Michigan just because, like, your immediate thought about Michigan is one particular way, and I think they own it. Like, being a Michigan person is something, but I think there's people that naturally hate what Michigan people are forever. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen. Yep. Not me. I'm just saying those humans do exist out there. Harbaugh's become one of my favorites. But we have now happened into a time where this AI is not good. No, Dangerous. No, no. This is not good. These edits are getting too, too good. And Jim Harbaugh is the most recent one. Listen and watch this particular video that was on the internet last night. Now, this account. Yeah, Heavens. Heavens has done it. talent. He's good. Heavens <laughs> is a real talent. He's darn good. He's a real, real talent. Because this particular promo hit the internet last night, and I think everybody was aware that it wasn't necessarily real, mm -hmm. which we all need to know as we go to watch this. But while you're watching it and seeing how good it looks, it's like, wait a minute. Play the video, please. It's got to be America's team. Got to be America's team. I can tell. America loves a team that... Uh, you know, has all the resources and advantages, you know, and still tries to break the rules to find that any little extra advantage. And, you know, there's nothing more American. And that's my favorite kind of team. Yeah, um, cheating, um, lying, and then playing the victim. It doesn't get any more red, white, and blue than that. <laughs> okay, so heavens, heavens crushing it. So yeah. good. Thank the heavens for the heavens account, yeah. obviously. But when you watch that, you said you can tell. Yeah, I guess if you fully investigate that and look at the lips, you can tell. But there's a lot of people that are not going to be able no. to tell in the future no. with things that are just on the Internet. They're going to get quoted, sent, clipped, gone. Think about if this had actual implications on it. What if this was a world leader? Oh, I don't know. Putin. Yeah. Okay. And Putin has one of these videos where he says something about us. And then all you need is what? One person in America with any legitimacy just be like, listen to this shit. Boom, put it out there. And then are we going to call Russia to see if it's true or not? Mm. We need to worry about this. Hey, this Heavens is a talent. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm assuming there's only one Heavens and nobody else is going to be able to do this. But this is a scary time on the internet. This is scary because with where Jim Harbaugh is, bat a thousand, talking about pet chickens and everything, that video could easily be a Jim Harbaugh promo yeah. that would definitely go completely against how he actually feels, but people could believe in the narrative in world that we're in. I'm worried about it, AJ. I'm worried about it. That's all I thought of when I watched that video. Like, go promo from well, Heavens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was most worried. I started to become worried when we saw the uh, the Iowa OC. They had the, yeah. Remember that great one when he was telling people to get off his back That's or whatever? Also, what isn't, you know, is the thing. Now everybody can have them. Now they got a gold check, which I think I predicted, and I got killed for and everything like that. But how are we going to know it's just going to have to be community notes on everything and then? Yeah. Bingo. Community notes. Part of the plan, those, isn't it? The last layer. Isn't that part of it, though? Hey, put out so much. Just put everything out there so no one can decipher what is real, what's a big deal, and what's not. It's a great time uh, to be a live talk show host. Yeah. Ugh. You know? Yeah. <laughs> There's a great time. Uh, by anything. No chance. Mm -mm. No chance. Yeah. Everything. You get to learn everything. You know, you get to see everything. Yeah. Yeah, but you avoided the, you know, the 90s because all those guys who were hosting shows, they were doing much different things than they are now. What were they doing there? Well, you know, you can kind of just Google anything you want. Name one, Howard Stern, Jimmy Kimmel. Just go check it out. It's up to you. <laughs> it seemed like two people uh, that were pretty calculated in this particular Well, they, they both did yeah. one thing that I'm thinking of, uh, but then, uh, you know, there's uh, other stuff, too, that have been done gotcha. and said. I understand. You know, you know Yesterday I fucked up. I didn't get our official picks. You know who'd you pick? Hey, Broncos. Sure worked out for you. I picked though. Broncos yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. I strictly picked Broncos because AJ picked mm -hmm. Bills. Oh, I felt like you probably were mad at me. You texted me. I said Bills all the way. I'm probably you were probably upset at the time, but they end up winning. Uh, I wasn't upset, but I did have in mind that I was going the opposite of whatever you were going. Sure. And I thought you were going to go Broncos because the defense and Josh Allen turnovers, I thought that's what you were going to do. So when you texted Bills all day, I actually thought to myself, I don't mind Broncos plus seven and a half because all everybody said was like, that's a close game. Yeah. I have an interesting stat from Hembo, actually. The last eight losses that the Bills have had over the last two seasons are for a combined 31 points. Oh. All two to six point losses for this Buffalo Beals team. Mm. That's an interesting stat from Hembo, but also those are heartbreaking numbers because you're this close to winning. Yeah. You're this close to winning, and for some reason you don't. What could that be attributed to, you think? Mm, I don't know. It's, well, we all know it's a fine line between winning and losing the league. We talked about it yesterday. Most of these games come down to, you know, that two minute drive, that last one. 
And when you turn over that ball at the rate that the Bills have been doing, you mentioned it earlier, it's one thing to be turning over that much, but also have the most touchdowns, the most explosive plays from the position. But when one of those decline and that you know, turnover numbers stay up there, it's, it's hard to win games. Yeah, and you just don't have the attention to detail, like 12 guys on a field Ooh. in Week 10 Jeez. on a game-winning field goal. Come on. That can't happen, AJ. That's tough. Sean McDermott said they practiced <laughs> dime to field goal. <laughs> In during they either last week or whatever, so sure. should have been able to execute it. They were not able to. It's like they had a lot of time. It's not like it was not a, it's a real thing. I mean, it's a real thing. You practice and you absolutely need to practice for a reason. You see it because you're, you're right. There's so many different personnel groupings you can put in defensively that you got to know. Like you, everyone has to be aware. And to be clear, the NASCAR May Day kick at half uh, more so than the end of the game because Aaron was right. They snapped that ball too early, by the way. Mm -hmm. Just would like to let everything know. But 20 seconds, 21 seconds, that's like the perfect amount of time for a May Day NASCAR. I assume the holder on the sideline had a towel. Like this, oh, yeah. waving towel to kind of let everybody on the field know that is a NASCAR or May Day field goal. So the offensive line that isn't in, the offensive players that isn't in, flat down the line of scrimmage, let the kicking team come in from more so of the middle of the field. Uh, there was no steps there by Will Lutz. The spot was kind of marked by Riley Dixon, the punter, and then the snapper's just job is to kind of make it happen. So this is something that's practiced, though, every single week. Very, very rarely happens. They had two in one game. I don't know what the stats are on that. Yeah. It is probably very low. But there's a lot of people that practice that. Then at the end of the game, Riley Dixon had something on his hand. Whoa. Yeah. Mm. Look out. Everybody was talking about maybe it, it was spider attack or something like that. Okay. The internet was kind of saying, excuse me, NFL, we'd like an investigation. Uh, my sources were telling me that earlier in the game, uh, Riley Dixon, we could probably pull up the clip, find the clip. There was a snap that was low or something along those lines where his hand ended up on the turf mm -hmm. and it cut. The hand oh. was bleeding, so they put like a fake skin on his hand, oh, pretty much skin. to stop the bleeding. <laughs> new skin because he did not want the big patch on his hand. Makes sense. Uh, because I don't know if it was for look or for comfort, but that's what my sources have told me that that was new skin. Because and why would uh, mm -hmm. I understand that he's catching the ball, but like stick them not great for field goal. <laughs> that's not like the... Yeah. Because there's a chance... I, if yeah. I was a kicker, I might be pissed if I felt like there was some <laughs> stick them that got on that football. Yeah, what do we... Well, and also, like, that, you wouldn't want... Why would you yeah, want you I don't, that much stick them? And be a little less obvious if it was. Yeah, that but, much stick them, too, would be, like, <laughs> actually on your... Sticking to the ball. Yeah, problem. Last thing you yeah. want is any type of friction with the rock. So that's what my sources told me. Pretty close to the situation. Very close to the situation. Mm -hmm. Well, you might be lying, D, but I heard you making some noise. Uh, no, you, hey, I, I trust I trust your sources. I trust you. I mean, it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't make sense. But I, I did see, um, so when they're doing that NASCAR thing, they always switch the ball out for the K-ball? Yes. Okay, because I saw that as well. I didn't know if the offense could say, hey, we just want to keep that ball, or the head coach can say that. But it has So you to. practice with uh, quarterback balls sometimes? Mm -hmm. Like, um, if that was at like 21 seconds, 20 seconds, I think, mm -hmm. with the last play starting. And that's taught, too, by the way. Offense, hey, get down. Yep. NASCAR field goal is actually being called in there. As soon as you get this thing, get down so we can get out. 21 seconds feels like the right amount of time. But if it's quicker... Like, let's say it's like 18, 17 seconds on a third down play. There's a good chance that ball is not getting subbed out because there isn't enough time. So you practice it with a quarterback ball every once in a, yeah. every once in a while. Smart. Yeah, but every, if the refs can get it in, you would certainly want them to because it's only like, I don't know, probably seven, eight yards difference. Yeah, but you just got to depend on whoever that ref is. That could be Catching, a, throwing. That could be a 40 year old guy. That could be a 65 year old dude getting that thing spotted. It is very tough. They made both of them well. They missed that one. They made, yeah. both. They made both. Two for two on the books. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Let's just keep it moving. You're going to hit that second mulligan through, though. Yeah. If you you get a mulligan? Like, um, mm -hmm. I forget if it was Troy or Joe, or maybe it was Peyton, Kyle, and Eli. I forget who brought it up. But somebody was like, is he going to make this? And right before the kick, Eli was like, yes, he's going to make this. Like, it is. That is a mull. Everybody that's ever golfed before. Kicking Two is balls very, off the first tee, right? Yeah. I mean, you get a breakfast ball. Yeah, you, right. Professional kicker, especially one as talented as Will Lutz, who has not had his greatest year this year, obviously, versus years past. But he's like one of the greatest kickers in the last 10 years. If you look up his stats yeah. whenever he was at the Saints, he's very, very accomplished. It's like he gets a practice shot at it. It's like, all right, I'm not going to do that again. He's going to make it. Yeah. Guys like me, I miss two.
I missed two in a row. Guys in the NFL, you'd hope, would not miss two in a row, especially from that distance, 36 yards. Let's get smarter today to wrap up today's show. Hell yeah. Let's do something that we get to do that nobody else gets to do because we get a chance to listen to a man who's a nine-year NFL vet, a guy who's played every single position in the secondary, a super-duper smart football brain. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Everything DB with Darius Butler. Hey, boy, D-Boy! Hey, boy Oh, Look at that, D-Boy. Looking chip. really cool today. Mike wow. Good? Is it Mike really good? cool Mike, today. Mike sounds good. Where'd you All get right. that coat? Mike is good. Mike is good. This is, uh, what is this? That's sweet. Scotch and soda. Who? Whoa. Whoa. Scotch okay. and soda. Nice it's brand. Like I do like it. I do. No, it's not. It's cool, not. Man. Very affordable. Very affordable. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. It doesn't look affordable. like it. Ah, you could have fooled me. That looks like super fashion. Good Good little autumn. You know, autumn colors, little fall fit. Yeah, it, hey, yeah. crushed it. Yeah. yeah, got the mint in there. Yeah, man, let's get to it, man. Yeah, let's. First hey, quarter. this is mint, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. a little minty. Yeah, yeah. A little fresh. First quarter, we got the uh, brand new, new lions. lions out here. We got a couple clips from them. This is uh, Hell yeah. name again, Foxy Anzalone. Yes, yep. sir. Alex. Anzalone. Yeah. So I don't know, AJ. If it, I don't know if it's a blitz or a run key, but obviously these linebackers are firing off downhill. I don't know if he got caught in the middle, but he saw an opportunity. Hey, got to get after the quarterback. Herbert expected some time coming out of this fake. He's going to try to throw this ball away, actually, but Anzalone gets a hit on him. It's an overthrow. I always talk about tips and overthrows. Oh. Thought this one was out of bounds, but Kirby Joseph continues to make plays on the ball. Just an unbelievable play. Not only catch this, but get the knee down and bounce. Big, big play. Turnover. Obviously, this game came down to the last possession, so obviously, this was a huge play. Play. Herbert trying to throw it away once again. Anzalone, you'll see this from the back copy too. Just see him kind of take the that distribution. D, but yeah. sorry to cut you off, but like that's how, how with the motion they communicate and then watch them all Probably switch off the, the routes. Like this was that was beautiful. Sorry, to do that. I just yeah, I didn't notice that the first time. So we can see what uh, AJ's referencing. Uh, if you go to the wide, this is how you pick yeah. it up. You know when we we watch so many clips where they go to into motion, they get to a mm -hmm. stack or a bunch or something, and teams don't pass it off well. Like this yep. looks nice. Well, Keenan Allen coming over that speed motion. Hutch staying in the passing lane too, mm -hmm. so he couldn't throw it to Everett. Look at that! See it right here. Look at him talking. Look at this guy pointing. I got him coming over. Good communication. Yeah. Get down here. Always talk about verbal and nonverbal communication and defense. Boom! Everybody going, getting after it once again, getting that knee and inbound. Big play. time yeah. play. Yeah. You'll see the catch a little better from the back. Tight copy. Just unbelievable play. Obviously, Herbert just trying to throw this one away on second and eight. Um, Was it tough to put this on because Herbert's your guy? No, it's on him. I mean, should he throw it? He threw it. He got picked off. He could have threw it a little early. You saw him hesitate. Kind of, he first comes out of there and sees Anzalone in his face. He could just throw it at that point, especially if you're outside of the tackle box. You just got to get it to the line of scrimmage as a quarterback. But he kind of hesitated, uh, double clutched it a little bit. And Kirby Joseph made an unbelievable play on the ball. Hutch talked about uh, how there was one play where he was chasing Herbert and he thought he was just going to throw it away. And Herbert completed like a 15 or 17 yard yeah. ball. Oh, and then yeah. he was just barking at Hutch. As they were running up to Herbert oh, was really to, yeah Herbert Ooh. that's what Hutch said Hutch said he heard about it from Herbert after he completed it okay. I like that hey, awesome. a little, little Moxie out uh -huh. of the oh, and the guy that keeps on popping up on his tape Deron Bland obviously uh, you know you're missing a, a star a stud like Trevon Diggs what's he doing recruiting Bland. No, Javon oh, Diggs. Diggs. He's trying to get his brother out there to Dallas. Okay. That, that's what <laughs> he's doing. Don't, don't, don't blame yeah. him at Damn all. Shame, bro, bro. But we got quarters back here, and uh, we see this right all the time. Over with the deep post from uh, Jalen Hyatt. Speedster right here, right? Now you're going to get this overlap because these guys down here are beating quarters, I think. You get this overlap from the backside because this safety, he's going to take that crosser. So now it's this corner. You just got to overlap and find work. And where's your work here? This guy, fastest guy on the field. It's great to have eyes, anticipation, oh. vision. The quarterback's not going to really account for him play. and go up and pick. I mean, that's a big, big-time play. He's been doing his thing in man coverage and zone coverage, and he just has a knack for the football. Even as a rookie last year, four or five interceptions this year, he gets the inter interceptions, and he gets them in the end zone a lot. Sees the formation. Yeah, but he has to know the coverage, know yeah. the routes, to know that he can get off and do other work. <laughs> yeah, and we see it. We, we've seen it with these clips. We've seen his route, like, how many times? The deep over deep over. It's, it's a common route. Dagger routes, uh, outside floods. These are common routes that you see pop up on tape week in and week out. And he also knows who's on the opposite side of the field. You know you got a speed guy. He's on the scout report, so he's probably going to take a shot. Hell yeah, Bland. Yeah, this yeah. was on Everything DB for the other reason, right? I forget earlier in the season where the corner didn't get Did deep. not, yeah. Or, or he got there, but uh, Lamar. Bad D. Yeah, Lamar, it was part of the bad D. Yeah, yeah. Lamar put it on Zay Flowers. Yeah, there yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was bingo. right there. 
Here we go. Joe Burrow. Hey, D'Amico Ryans. Hey, we got Shaq Griffin, Shaquille Griffin. Yeah, it's a lot of guys in this defense that have kind of been yep. on been in the league for a while. Kind of, if you follow football, you know their names. But if you're a casual fan, you don't. Shaquille Griffin probably falls into that category, but he's been making some big-time plays. Stevie Nelson, another mm-hmm. guy, Jimmy Ward. A lot of guys on this defense. Scramble rules, right? You get down this red area, every quarterback becomes a scrambler. Obviously, Burrow's been healthy. Oh, yeah. he, he had a huge play rolling to his left to uh, Jamar Chase in this game for like a 70-yard touchdown. But in this one, got some trouble. He wanted this guy. We'll see it from the back copy. We're going to have a double team here. Cornerback once again with vision, pass it off, sink back, mm. make Yikes. a play. First down. Big too. time play. Huge. Fourth quarter, four minutes left on the clock. We know how close this game was. Yes, huge play. This this Texas team doesn't blink. Dude. You run it back, buzzing. Play? They don't at all. You run it back. So um, like I said, one of this tight end, and this tight end was making plays from, from the beginning. I want to say he had five catching like the first quarter. He wanted a little out and up. Route was a little lazy, but it was double covered. Perryman and safety over the top went there and then scrambled. And then got in trouble. That's a big interception. Huge. Yeah. He's still looking that huge. Way. And then they had the drop um later on with Tyler mm-hmm. Boyd, which mm-hmm. was a big mishap too. Hey, show the guy. Give him some props. Uh, that's not him. Ninety eight. Show the rankings. Had two sacks. Had a pressure on the overthrow, which was the other interception in this game. J.J. Watt probably shot him out tomorrow, but huge, huge game from Rankins. Sounds like kind of an undercover dog. A little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Another Should episode be. coming Thursday. Mm-hmm. Should be. Yes. J.J. will probably say yes. fuck again. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Lions. he's on Wednesday. Lions yeah. back on the tape. Now, here talk, we go. talked about him earlier. Ben Johnson does a great job designing these plays, putting the defense in bind. So you, if you run it back to the beginning before the motion, they have two plays called in the huddle. You see Goff do this a lot. So he'll alert alert to this second play. Uh, this is Khalif Raymond. Yes. yes. Yeah, Khalif Raymond down in the bottom going to become the X receiver. So when you get out here and you have a corner lined up across the tight end, you know it's probably zone coverage. Hard play action, run fake here, linebackers, AJ, this is tough. Obviously, as a linebacker, you're trying to get to that outside zone. He's going to come back and be a crosser. Corner's trying to pass him off because he's not running with the low crosser. Oh, so he's bro. passing him off. But Shut these guys, up. and then you got to blitz up. If you're running back to the top, I hate this. As a, as a nickel guy, played a long time at the nickel. If you're going to blitz, you're already topped off by the safety. Just get down there and go because you're coming from that far. You're not going to impact the plate at all. They get He gets the blitz. He gets sucked up on the play action. Trying to pass the cross off, he gets wide open. That's a long way. I think this was the first, yeah, long way. first play of the game winning drive. Yep. Big it was. Yep. Oh. And you see Ben Johnson too on the sideline. Go, 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 go. Running with him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hell yeah. yeah, we did it. Woo. Now think about the next play. Now we don't need one. <laughs> I don't think we need one, he says. Big play. And it's tough, man. That, like that play action, you're trying to make you trying to get Come to on. that running back on the outside. You get that hard play action, and he doesn't boot, right? So he doesn't boot out into that blitz that's coming from the field. Instead, it's a hard play action. He goes straight back, and he knows the Raymond's good. Like, this is a design play, a design throw where golf doesn't have to. He gets right back, and he knows Raymond's going to be open. Is Brandon Staley a moron? <laughs> I wouldn't say that, man. It's tough, though. You look at a lot of the stats with, with Herbert and, and you know, I think they got like seven turnovers all this year combined and have five losses with seven turnovers. Doesn't necessarily add up, especially with the numbers that Herbert's putting up. But he's Once a defensive again. guru. Listen, hey, this is a swap. So if this, this situation where Staley calls this and I'm a nickel, I look back at my safety or maybe a back or somebody and I give them this blitz just because I'm too far away. Or or I just get down there, you know. Don't let your disguise, you know, be uh be a hamper to your actual job. Got to get it done. But this is tough, man. You sending that pressure. He's pointing to nobody. Tough sledding. You don't want that as a defense. It's like week ten. Week ten. You can't be having twelve guys on the field on special teams for a game winner. It's like fourth quarter. You should know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. You know, what I mean? you should you shouldn't just have guys wide open on game winning drives. Ben Johnson, though, baby. Yeah. He's drawing it up. Play he, does. Does. he calls yeah. it at the right time, too. It sounds like that's a perfectly timed yeah. play call right He had there. another one this game. Uh third and one, I believe, play action, hard play action, and, and tight end went right up the seam. Oh, He's yeah. pretty and much Brock right up the Yep. Brock Touchdown, right, right yep. up the seam. Uh St. Brown, number three, quarters coverage. It's gonna be tough. So as a quarters coverage. This guy, now, if two comes under, he's going to sit him down because this quarter safety, he's going to relate to two vertical. If two doesn't go vertical, then that basically becomes the new number two. And instead of being outside leverage, he's going to be, I mean, instead of being inside leverage of two, he's going to now be outside leverage. St. Brown, it's going to be bad ball, a bad matchup for that safety against that type of receiver. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, Once again, a good play design versus a defense that you know you're going to get. So you got quarters up top. He's oh, going to occupy both of those quarters defenders. Boy. And now you got a safety chasing uh, St. Brown from number three position. Always oh, open. Buddy. Always Ooh. open in the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. So that's first quarter, though. You know? Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe make an adjustment. Yeah, there. yeah first try. First quarter, yeah. they got guys wide open. Fourth quarter, they got guys wide open. Ben Johnson's. It's play design. It's play design. It's timing, knowing when to do it. It's putting your players in the position. So uh, it's all those things. You know, you got to have a team. Uh, a Rod mentioned it. You got to have a team. You know, players, great players, obviously on this level, make great coaches. So it's one thing to call the plays, but being able to execute it, being able to make throws, and then being able to, you know, do your job. They're so good. Yeah, they the, are. The lines are unbelievable. Only thing fun I'm, to watch. Really fun to watch. Slightly concerned with the defense. You know, I feel like the defense is kind of taking a step back where they were, you know, a month ago. Because you looked at the team, they great rushing defense, great passing defense, playing a lot more zone this year than they have in previous years. A little concerned about that when you play good quarterbacks. But um, as a team, they're doing their thing. They're on everything DB. Yeah, what do you, you mean? You say you're concerned about the DB. Look at hey, that. Interception. They are making plays. Boom. Especially right. Kirby. Opportunity they are making plays. Interception. Anzalone has come along. What they give up? I think we're going to get CJ GJ back at some point as yep. well. That will be big. Obviously, you love Branch. You, um, you know, lost Mosley earlier this yep. year. But, um, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of great things. Now, rarely, rarely put losers on for good things. But we love the DB. Bills. Not that. Of this, this is a, this is a wow. great. And of I know what do you Dor say? You I say Josh Ken, Allen's good no, and Ken, Lamar Jackson's Lamar bad? Jackson is good. Love, love Lamar. Love uh, Josh. I had a lot now, of people saying, why don't you judge Josh Allen the same way you do Lamar Jackson? I'm like, do we judge Lamar Jackson? We definitely don't. don't. We're Lamar Jackson fans. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. talk ball. But, um, MVP. Hey, Ken Dorsey is unemployed yeah. right now, but this is a Wrong great, <laughs> come on, great, great play design. So you got Dalton Kincaid here, the, the athletic tight end. He's lined up at number one. This is going to be the flat defender, Justin Simmons. And even uh, when I saw it last night live on the TV copy, I'm like, oh, man, the flat defender, you got to take that will. As a flat defender, your rules are to take the real wheel route. For those of you who don't know what a wheel route is, it's usually an out and up, and that becomes a flat player's responsibility. But it's a caveat to it. As this flat player, you take the wheel route from the number two or number three guy. You don't take a wheel route from number one. That is on the deep third player. Deep third player will be Patrick Sertain, the second in this um, clip. But you got Stephon Diggs at the point. He's going to run a straight vertical, which is also the deep third player's responsibility. So if you run it a couple frames, you pause it here. So on paper, this corner is responsible for both of these verticals. But as you can see, these verticals are about six yards difference. Where Diggs is compared to where Kincaid is, you're taught your coach to be like on this midpoint. And then if he goes inside, that's obviously the safety's responsibility. But down here in the red area, this is a tough, tough spot for this corner to be in because he's never going to see that guy. And that's, once again, he's responsible for two and three into the flat. That's number one. He goes up, runs that play, and they're just in the bind. They're both kind of looking at each other. It's one of those plays that is just Terrible a perfectly ball. designed play. Good play call. Yeah, it's a good play call. Great you play just, call. Yeah. Terrible ball spin. Tough. Oh, and, uh, let me see it again. Let yeah, see it. I mean, it's a great play call, yeah. it seems like, here from a guy Gotta who just lost his jaw. Yeah. Yeah. Right spin. Got to be off two and three there. But uh, tough, tough, tough spot to be in. It's one of those plays you get beat so on. So what, he's just supposed to drop back this way? He's he's he, he's here. So the the best thing he could have done, let's say he has so yeah, he do has, he does have eyes inside. It's spin back across, back around. So you're here, you see the throw, you either put the foot to the ground, go here, Impossible. or you go here. But he's got to deliver digs to the safety first, right? Exactly. But look at all his space, right? So let's yeah. say Diggs sees him widen, he's gonna go to I mean, if Josh sees him widen, he's gonna go to Diggs. And Josh does a good job here also holding that safety in the middle oh. of the field. If you rewind it back a little bit, his eyes stay down the middle of the field because if he's looking this way, then the safety is going to start to move with his eyes. So he keeps his eyes down the middle. So this is what you want to see more out of Josh, you know, having a complete understanding of his play call, where I'm going with the ball, because doing because he knew where he was going with his ball. He's going here or here. But his eyes are going to control that safety and then put Patrick Sertain and Justin Simmons in a, in a, in a bad spot. Now, 
you feel it, you may feel it as that as that flat defender and just continue to sink. But that's a tough, tough spot to be in. Great play design, great execution. Want to see more of that from Josh. We'll see if it happens now with Joe Brady calling the plays. Dalton Kincaid, front of the program. Bad ball spin, great touchdown. Yeah. Too bad it wasn't enough to get the win over the Broncos, but we win every time you speak. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Bob. Hey, Thank you, D-Butch. We appreciate you. Big shout out to D'Amico Ryans, Aaron Rodgers, Dan Orlovsky, and that man. Battling through having yeah. one and a half eyeballs right now. Don't. We appreciate you, AJ. Boy, AJ. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you guys. You want to give a speech? Uh, no, I think I'm good today. Come on. I thought maybe you got a little Damn. different perspective, you know? Actual. Yeah. Now that only one eye works well. I have. Cool. You know what? Actually, what something was on my mind earlier came my algorithm. There's way too many people trying to climb Mount Everest right now. People are dying because they're waiting in line to try to get to the summit. That just seems stupid to me. Saw that. They say if on your way to Everest, you're going to face a lot of adversity and you see a lot of dead bodies. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to see it because I'm not doing it. Okay. But it seems like a lot of people watch a doc and watch movies and they want to uh, challenge themselves and potentially post it on Instagram. So everybody's trying to do it. Is that what you're saying? Everybody, too many people? It just seems like a, a log jam there. Doesn't seem like they, you know, they don't. Don't do kill the, Majora. Respect it. Yeah. You, you should have yeah. to make reservations. I think they're all kind of crowded. Like only 50 people allowed on the mountain at one time. Yeah, but then you have to have all the coyotes, oh, yeah. shamans. The Sherpas. The Sherpas. Sherpas. 15 Sherpas per person. That's the thing. They said like inexperienced climbers need like 10 different people to carry their gear. I've heard about one of them Sherpas putting a body on the back. Yep. Oh, yeah. From like close to Way peak up. all the way down saving life. Yeah. Like, just what yeah. you, how do you live? Well, this man who's half the size of me put me on his back and then just did ever, half of Everest yeah. with, wow. with me on the back. Absurd. There is, that's it, completely absurd yeah. over there. How long do those trips usually take? Oh, I don't know. No. The top. I haven't looked into it. A lot of times they don't even make it. You got to camp out and wait for the perfect weather to try to keep going and go. It takes forever. And then a lot of times people don't even make it because of weather. Yeah, Alec Honnold, I've, I've seen him have to battle against some weather whenever he's trying to. Uh, Climb the face of some mountain. Mark LeClaire. Mark LeClaire, rest in peace. Takes about two months. Yeah. yeah. Two months. Two months. Who has two? Jeez. That's what people are doing when they do Everest? <laughs> they're committing two months, one-sixth of a year? Longer than that, yep. too, because they're training for it. Oh, yeah. Come on. What While climbing doing? a mountain such as Denali with a peak of 20,000 might just take around three to four weeks, the average expedition to summit Mount Everest takes two months. A typical Mount Everest expedition takes about two months. Just want to double that down, they said. Yeah. <laughs> two months. That's a long time. That's a lot of commitment. Yeah, a lot of We appreciate things. everybody doing it, but let's make sure we're safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. A long time. Appreciate that, AJ. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for that thought. That was a good speech. Looking out. I know yeah. D-Butt's a skier, right? He's a skier, so I don't know if he wants to start, you know, I did enjoy climbing. it. I did enjoy it. You want skiing? Downhill yeah. skiing. With, uh, with my boy Vontae. Vontae put me on a good, good <laughs> hey, he's ski He's a big trip. time skier, right? I've seen him. He is. Yeah, he loves it out there. Oh, yeah. He, he's a dog on the slopes. Apres ski, the whole thing. He, oh, he, yeah. like, he has, uh, I think he had yep. a cabin out there or something, didn't he? Yeah, I yeah, really uh, nice. Tell you right. Utah folks have invited us to go ski this off season. Ooh. Ooh. I've never done it. I've never it's really done a, it. Oh, Utah would be incredible. Ooh. What, skiing out there? Yeah. Park City? Oh, yeah. I don't really get cold, so I think. Winter sports would be good for me. Sure. You know, and it's also something to do, right? Yeah, also... Yeah. Uh, it's the best. Big mass, you know, it helps a lot. You you would fly down the mountain. Oh, you're talking about because Every E equals year. MC squared. Bingo, yeah. Got it. All right. Flying. Einstein told me I'm going down the hill fast. Find me at those uh, purple, black, rock, diamond. Boom. Double Boom. black diamonds. Boom. Boom. Find Boom. me at the top. Oh, that's one of those helicopters drop you off. Yeah, me and Sean White. We're going to hit that uh, half pipe Ooh, up. Yeah, yeah well, you got to sign a uh, form. Is the Flying Tomato still doing it? Oh, yeah. yeah there's a doc Wait. on him on uh, Mox. Just and it's came, awesome? Recently came out. I have not watched it yet. We got Hard Knocks coming next Tuesday. Yeah. Oh. Can't wait. Flying Tomato was going out with some like uh, other athlete, I believe, right? Is he engaged? It was like a high-profile relationship. That's the only reason oh. I asked. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Oh. How many gold medals this guy win? How many X Games? 30. All of them. Yeah. He won all the X Games. Too many to count. Flying tomato. Oh, Phelpsy. Uh, he's he's made his way back into my algo, Michael Phelps. Yeah, having dinner with JJ. Yeah. Dinner with JJ. And also, uh, he's got these goat tubs. Have you heard about these goat? He has cold tubs, hot tubs. Oh, really? Oh, aren't they? We're, they're hot tubs, but they're big enough. And they they, sh they have the current so you can swim into it. We've thought about getting one. I don't know about that. I, do they? I assume they do so you can work out. But he's got the hot tub, cold tub. Oh. Thing. Jeez, he's getting all of it. Okay, good. Yeah, and it's a full, it's not like a stand in. It's like a full lay down hot tub on one side, cold tub on the other side. It's like 
Now we're flushing. Now we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Cold tub, hot tub, cold tub, hot tub. Two minutes, three minutes, two minutes, three minutes. Opens up the veins, yeah. closes the veins. Open up the veins, close the veins. Pump it all out, all the lactic acid. Used to do it whenever I was kicking balls. Thought it would help. Yeah. Felt like it did. For now sure the goat's did. trying to help people. For sure did, especially for people with low yeah. body fat. Good What's contract. the next era? We're in the cold tub era right now where everybody loves cold tubs. I think, the, I think this Everest. is it. Cryo. What's next? The What's infrared next? light thing. Yeah. That's still likes. big. No, that's, just, is, that's a tag team partner with the cold tub, right? Aren't they all doing it's it? It's all kind of, yeah, probably, it's a package deal. You're probably right. I think the flushing of hot tub, cold tub is the next thing because that is like, uh, you know, taking the cold tub to the next. It's the next phase. You know? Cybernetics, replacing your body parts with electronics and machinery. See, probably I'm sick right. of you saying yeah. that stuff. Because Might that be is what you make us think that all the future is, as opposed to these fake videos of Jim Harbaugh saying America likes cheaters. Elon's trying to do it with Neuralink. Yeah, they are testing Neuralink on humans now. I heard they're looking for somebody to remove an eighth of the chunk of their brain. Yeah, good news. Got about 50 bombs downtown Indianapolis. You can do it, and they won't even know. What's your problem? They're the best. They will know if they lose an eighth of a brain. Yeah. I don't uh. know. <laughs> Meth Alley has been packed lately. That's sad. Why don't you go help him? Got your, I do. Got your shirts. binos out. Get shirts, get clothes, right? Yep. Food? Yep. Bunions? What? Toothpaste? I heard something happened. Uh, I'm not saying it. What? What? A homeless community in San Francisco? Something? Oh, yeah. They oh, yeah. Sweep, what homeless sweep community out. in San Francisco? Exactly. Yeah. They shot them all in the head for the uh, China what? president to come. D-Bud said it better. That's not true. No. That is not. We got to make sure everybody knows that that's not true. Where'd they go then? That was a meme you saw on the internet. Where'd but they go? I did hear there was quite, just like when L.A., whenever the yeah. Super Bowl was out there. Exactly. Yeah. That they was asked, crazy. They asked Gavin Newsom about it, and he said, if you had guests come over to your house, would you not clean up your house? Is that real? I, yeah. yeah. No, that's exactly what he said. And yes. people are also pretty pissed because they- Bro, asked, I love the world we live. That was a good quote. <laughs> that's a real quote. That, that yeah, you know what I'm saying? We don't know. We don't know anything no, about this was. AI. Okay. But like, uh, probably, probably, yeah, I said it. Is that how we know that that was- uh, mm -hmm. The world we live in is so stupid. It is so, so dumb. Because I have figured out a way to live a life without any of this. But sometimes shit is so absurd it just makes a way in. This type of stuff is bananas. Yeah. It's awesome. There's, these people are in charge. Mm -hmm. There's people in charge mm -hmm. making rules and stuff mm -hmm. who hey. are dipshits. Yeah. I just hope. I'm not saying him, but I'm just saying in general. Mm -hmm. Anytime it makes its way into my, I don't know him enough. I assume, I don't I see he's in politics. Yeah, people don't love him. I assume he's an idiot. I, that's how I kind of, but that shouldn't be the case, AJ. As somebody who doesn't know politics that well, my immediate thought shouldn't be, oh, in politics, idiot. That should not be, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. Well, that's the only time it makes I mean, way. There's no adults. We say it all the time. There's no adults anywhere. Like, there's no such thing as adults. Hey, smart people, figure it out. Figure it out, smart people. These guys figure it out. We're doing the sports, okay? We're trying. We're trying. Mm -hmm. Get analytics. Too many people are watching this show. People need to stop, okay? Watch other stuff. It's smarter and better. But in the sports world, we're thriving. I think we're doing our thing. Yeah. NHL numbers up. Mm -hmm. NBA numbers are up. Mm -hmm. NFL is always going to be the NFL. Sure. I mean, we got PLL League blossoming. Bingo. Yeah. We're doing our thing in society. Why don't you smart people? Now, listen, smart people are doing their thing as well. Let's not get crazy. But the whole politics thing, let's get a little better. Please. please. Yeah. You guys need to figure that shit out. Okay, let's just do smart stuff. Right, AJ? Was Dano doing a presentation with Rabel? He made it sound like that. And then uh, the PLL folks quote tweeted it and retweeted it and said, Dan Orlovsky's here to celebrate hometown team being born. What's yeah, that mean? They, uh, they, I believe they returned the Cannons team back to Boston. Wow. Bought the what happened? They got stolen? No, no. The when the they stole the Cannons when the MLL and the PLL combined into the PLL, the Cannons were no longer in Boston. Mm. So now they're returning the Cannons back. Are the to Cannons Boston. in MLL or? Uh, yeah, they they were one of the old guard teams. That's where Rabel played uh, before they started the PLL. Got it. So they're the Flint Tropics. Kind of, yeah. Stolen to another league. Yeah, kind of. And then now they're coming back home. Mm -hmm. It's about time. They play at Fenway Park, TD Garden. Actually, they used to play, I think. They got Big Poppy on the team? Larry Park. Bird's there? No, they're just talking about the legends of Boston that are. Oh, oh it smokes. Shirtless Bill's on it. I was about to say, it's got to be the best yeah, fucking team of all time. Yeah. The Red Sox are not letting them play at Fenway Park. I no, know that. no. Oh, so they're just kind of promo on the city of Boston yeah, big and New England, pretty much. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're going to play at BU or Harvard. I, I believe they played at BU before. Are we a Cannon? We like the Cannons or? Yeah, we like the Cannons. Kavanaugh. There's a Kavanaugh on there? Yeah, that's right. You got the Kavanaugh boys on the Cannons? Yeah, okay. Why uh, okay. well, I know the Cannons are close to a championship then if the Kavanaugh's are. Amen. They always are. They don't have 
They had Brady on there? Did I miss him? He was on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Say. We were very flustered. We thought they were all on the team. Yeah. Yeah. Ted Williams. You thought Bill Russell was on the team? Yeah, yeah. Ted Larry Williams. Burns. Maybe. Ted Williams, as you said, Bill. Hey, the hit from the French Lick. Imagine with the yeah. way he shot. You know, he shot like this. Imagine him with one of them oh, fucking yeah. sticks. Good luck. Oh, my That's God. Give him a long two. Six, nine. Long, defenseman. long yeah. so that thing's coming from 16 feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Down there. Goal. Oh, my God. Humming. Big poppy and goal. Nobody's getting past him. Good luck getting past him. Now, they're, they're parking his ass at the two point. And he's using that baseball swing. He's just shooting the rock as hard as he can. That's awesome. Probably put some lacrosse doing it. We're in lacrosse season. Yeah, <laughs> fall ball. Is PLL <laughs> playing right now? No, PLL oh, doesn't ball. play till uh, May. Okay, May. College May's lacrosse. Just, yeah. Actually, it starts right after college lacrosse ends, basically. Okay, sweet. Right well, we can't corner. wait for Notre Dame to run it back, be national champions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then good luck to the Cannons. They got a cabin off, so they got a shot. But I'm more of a. Uh, Mystic Warrior team. The uh, you, I thought you you were a chaos uh, guy. Love the chaos in, in, team in the whip snakes. Yeah, uh huh. Love the whip because what they whip and then yeah, that's the ball. Yeah, that's right. That, they whip it and uh-huh. then the ball is going so fast that it, it snakes its way into the goal. Bingo. AJ, that's the whip. Is that really a team? You the hear it snakes? go by your ear. Yeah. Oh yeah, you hear it. yeah, Maryland. Ain't got shit on the water dogs. Water dogs? Ain't got shit on the water They've dogs. They've been drowning. Yeah. There ain't no doggy paddle for the dog waters. I believe, I, I, don't get me wrong, but I think the whip snake's got a title already, too. Yeah, you're damn right. Anybody that has a full team of... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Brian Phipps retired? Fuck. I figured you'd be an Archers fan, though. 13 seasons? You don't like yeah, the Archers? He lost our guy. He's been at it for a while. My fanhood is now up. Uh, since Brian Phillips is no longer Phipps is no longer in the league, <laughs> I am up for sale. Who's the Archers? Uh, Utah Archers. Archers. Uh, are they playing in Salt Lake? <laughs> the Utah Archers. Uh, there's no other cities in Utah, so I'd Sokers, assume so. For sure. Yeah, they are pretty good. The Missed uh, Suckers? Yeah. Uh, both. Missed opportunity. Well, what well, we've been. T- Archers is a great. Connor Fields, I mean, boy's a star. Mac O'Keefe, oh, yeah. this guy's got four two-point goals. That's a lot. Yeah. Mike Sisselberger. <laughs> yeah. Fucking face-off machine. To side yeah. Do not <laughs> run into Sisselberger. <laughs> Fogo animal. Fogo. And one of the Cannons, they already have a team. They, where were they? They were in another city? So I think they did kind of like what the uh, – and I believe they did like a tour. If you remember, they were going city to city with all of the teams playing games every single weekend, but now they actually all, I believe, are going back to their own cities. Okay, so they said, listen, we were the USFL all in Memphis. Basically. Now, since we've had success, let's take it home. Yeah, they, they did a nice little country tour, but yeah, now they're all going back. Let's go to the roster on this Boston Cannon squad. Mm. Top right. Nope, nope, nope. Here it is. Oh, it's all right. This is good, too. Boom. Marcus Holman is a fucking beast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not only the amount of points, but one point goals. Chris is slanian, buddy. Nut job. Slaying a slanian is yeah. what they say about this guy. Four uh-huh. two point goals. Feels like that's about the right number. Asher Nolting, he wa- he wants to help Marcus out. Mm-hmm. You know, he wants to yeah. help. He wants to. And Stephen Kelly, Stevie. they need to get better. A I was going to say, Cecil Burger's eating his fucking lunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah all day. Yeah. Kavanaugh was a late addition. He was a uh, Redwood. And uh, now he's on the so full season with the Cannons. Oh, oh all right. back Chrome the Cannons is home. Archers leave. Where are the, the Redwoods league. out of? Jeez. Uh, the, uh, Redwood Forest. You said who stinks? The Chrome. Somewhere out west. One in nine. State. The yeah. Chrome or one and nine? Get him out of the league. The standings were on the last page. Trying to. On the right Did side. Did you say there's two point goals in lacrosse? Oh yeah. Four, yeah. Old buddy scored four of them. Yeah, of course there's wow. two pointers. Yeah, that's how far back. Standings right. Yeah. The Archers eight and two. Holy shit! Utah's doing it, aren't they? Mm-hmm, they're that, good. that makes sense. That's what yeah. Salt Lake does. Yeah. They win out there. The Cannons seven and three. Water Dogs seven and three. I thought they had a much worse year. Redwoods, Chaos, Whip Snakes, Atlas. Atlas stink too. Yeah, they've fallen off big time. Well, the Whip, whip Snakes. How are they supposed to win? When Brian Phipps says, "You know what, lame duck here." <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, ridiculous. <laughs> Congrats to the pool. Guys, Big day. Phipps, Phipps or Phillips? What is Phipps. It? Phipps. Phipps, asshole. Learn the product. <laughs> Please, follow the product. AJ, if this goes in, what are you giving away, dude? Same thing Dano almost had a heart attack for, whatever that was. <laughs> 10 five hunch, and then also there 10 merches. Go. Nice. Boom. Yahtzee. Oh. oh. Felt good. That one felt good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Felt good. Did feel good. Nice. Bang. 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 
No, ten, never a doubt. Five hundred dollar winners, ten merch winners from our friend with one and a half eyes over the last two days, AJ Hawk. You're a real hero, AJ. All you gotta do yeah, is retweet good. this post, say something nice to somebody in the same reply, but the easiest way to pay you digitally. We can't thank you enough for allowing us to do this for a living every single day. You're the greatest humans on earth. There's a lot of you, I've been told. Not watching right now, probably as many. I mean, there's too many people watching now, but there's a lot of motherfuckers on uh, TikTok, on uh, on the linear uh, oh, yeah. television thing. Oh, yeah. Not as much as some other linear shows, but certainly a lot more than other linear shows. Uh, that doesn't get talked about. And the fact that people watch on TV, I am so thankful for. Uh, but YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, linear, ESPN Plus, mm -hmm. it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And we want to say thank you all so much for allowing us to be a part of your life, uh, allowing us to be a part of your sports existence, hopefully. And thank you for allowing us to make you dumber. And when you're done with our show, we very much understand. You can just go ahead and not say that you, you hate us, though. Just kind of disappear. Mm -hmm. Until then, we will try to do our thing, hopefully make you laugh, give you a mental vacation, and inform you of everything happening around the sports world. You're the greatest people of all time. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Goodbye.